the flat. Brandon Drum, a first down, and he stumbles across the 30 to the 35-yard line. And Colorado will have a first down there. Well, McCoy came in motion, and he basically uh, he did a little bit of a pick. Watch him come in motion here, turns it inside, picks off a linebacker, and that, that frees up the, the fullback out in the flat, turns it up field. Look at the block down the football field by, the, by his uh, receiver, Cormier, who, who did a good job for him. A nice, uh, nice drop, job by Drum, who is basically the prototype fullback. Can run it, catch it, and block. They flank the tight end Graham to the top. Time and there is Cortland Johnson out of the backfield on first down. They get about six or seven. And let's take a look at a couple of players to watch in this afternoon's contest, Dave. Well, and they're going to be matched up with each other. Daniel Graham's 19 catches, 14 for first downs. His 19 catches on the season lead all tight ends in the country. And Ben Lieber, the best linebacker, arguably, on the Kansas State team, will be matched up against Daniel Graham all day long for the most part. We're going to have a substitution penalty against Colorado. It's going to cost them five yards. And John Bibles, our referee today. And when you got six yards on first down like that, that's an unfortunate penalty. It becomes a, a second and long rather than second and medium to short. Second and nine is a lot different scenario. And then Colorado's been so good on first down, averaging over six and a half yards per play on first down, which is outstanding. Leads to third down success. Here's a delay to Brown, and he gets just a couple, and now it'll be third down and seven. The scouting report for Colorado, Dave, what do they have to do today to be successful? Well, what they want to be able to do is, is win in the running game. And because Kansas State is fourth in the nation running the football and fourth in the nation stopping the run, they have to match that. They have to be big on first down. I mentioned they averaged 6.6 .6 yards per play on first down, only giving up 3.2. And turnovers. They had five turnovers against Fresno State. They lost the game. They've only had two in the last three games, all victories. Turning it over is a key. Third down, a long six. Hollowell. He stretched toward the first down. He's going to be short. He's going to be short by about a yard. Terrence Newman got a piece of him. One of the fastest men in college football is number four in purple today. And Cormier and himself running a little crossing pattern once again. Hollowell coming up just a little bit short. Big decision early on here for Gary Barnett. Look at this. And, and, he, and he's deciding he's going to go. He's got confidence in that big offensive line. Now, you know, because it's a short field. If this doesn't work out, Kansas State gets the football with a short field. Gary Barnett saying, we're going right away, and the ball gets kicked. Center just kicked the ball. Lucier kicked the ball <laughs> in the line of scrimmage, and, and it went about five yards down the field. They have to reset it. So now everybody's looking at each other, and there's smoke coming out of their nose, and Fire coming out of their eyeballs and <laughs> all sorts of stuff. This is a huge play right here. Bo Williams is offset at a fullback. Drum and Chris Brown. Quarterback sneak. Flags fly. I think little there was early. motion yeah. on Colorado. A little early. The crowd noise was a factor. And that's going to make it an easy decision. Punt the football away now. And they made the first down. Ran, ran right behind Gerard. The quarterback sneaked right behind, right in here, right behind Gerard and Rodgers, like you talked about. And, and went right over the big left guard. I think they had the first down, but there was early movement that, that nullifies the whole thing. It might have been Brandon Drum, the fullback, and, and you say, boy, you shouldn't be moving on a quarterback sneak. No, it, actually, he's no factor. He doesn't even have to come out of his stance because he's not going to make any kind of a key block. That's a huge mental mistake right there. If he wasn't sure of the snap count or he couldn't hear the snap count, more importantly don't move till the ball moves because you're no factor Mariscal the punt and the dangerous Aaron Lockett will try to return it and good coverage by Colorado he's dropped right as he caught it at the 27 yard line of punt just 33 yards Gary Barnett sent a message to his football team though Drew he said I believe in you guys and, and that going for it on fourth and short was huge no question. There's our singular offensive starters for Kansas State. L. Roberson, last week, just 12 completions and 34 attempts, but 257 yards. This offensive line's a veteran group, but they're beat up. The best of the bunch is E.B. at center. And Rock Cartwright and Josh Scobie, two very good backs. I know you love Cartwright, 5'8 and about 245. There he is. Watch him block. He's, uh, he's outstanding. 
Well, jumping was Brandon Dabdub, and he was pointing at Kansas State. And if that's a penalty on Kansas State, it's offside on, on Colorado. That's the second penalty of the day on Colorado. Now, Kansas State, Kansas State has had had the uh, the penalty problems. You'll see the early early movement right there. Dabdu just knocks the knocks the lineman backwards. Nobody moved for Kansas State. Dabdu just got fooled by the voice inflection of the quarterback L. Roberson. You can't move until the football moves. Two penalties on Colorado already. That's been Kansas State's Achilles heel. Cartwright gobbled up in the backfield. He didn't get near the line of scrimmage. He's going to lose two or three, leading the charge. Tyler Brayton, the 265-pound junior from the state of Washington. And here are the defenders for Colorado. Brayton's having a very nice year. Bannon's a three-year starter. He's outstanding inside. Harris can really run a bit undersized. Joey Johnson, the focus on him. He's fleet, a good athlete. He steps in for Jay Sean Sykes today and perhaps the rest of the year. Michael Lewis, about as good as you get at strong safety. Strickland's been in the end zone a couple of times this year. Trips to the top, Roberson runs a delay, and there's Cartwright breaking tackles. And he's gonna have enough for a first down. The ball came out late. Donald Strickland eventually made the tackle, but Rock Cartwright with that second effort got first down yardage. Well, Rock Cartwright is an attitude Establisher here. Look at it. 5'8, 240 pounds. And he plays a lot bigger. He will hit you. Sub 4'5, 40. Benches over 500 pounds. That is a man. Even though he's 5'8, it might be a short man, but it's all man. And all he cares about is the football team. He'll do anything that it takes to help his football team win a game. You want to see some collisions. If they run some leads today, linebacker meeting Rock Cartwright, it's not going to be a pretty sight. Roberson on the option. Nowhere to go with the football, and he picks up maybe a yard. There's Tyler Brayton again, number 99, and a flag comes in. A lot of emotion today. Kansas State last week so disheartened, losing by one to Oklahoma. And Colorado, as we talked about off the top, looks at this game as a chance After to get the play back to the top 20. Personal foul on the defense. That's the third penalty against That's Colorado. That's a 15-yard so. penalty. Fourth penalty down. against Colorado. So already a little bit of self-destruction going on there. And, and can't afford that. Kansas State's good enough football team not to help them. You get to eliminate Colorado from your schedule today if you're Colorado, because Kansas State is pretty effective on their own. Dave, did you find when you played the toughest time in a game to control your emotion the first few snaps? Well, particularly in a, in a big encounter like this, I mean, Colorado came out of the locker room ready to go. They, they were flying around the football field. This is a potential turnaround game for them from a respectability standpoint. They're up in the bit. But you have to contain that emotion. Here's where Roberson's dangerous. But Colorado answered, and you know who led the way? Joey Johnson on the weak side. And you could see there, Dave, that he has good lateral quickness. He can definitely run. And, and another another uh, great effort provided by the defensive line as well. I mean, they, they stayed in their lanes. You know, there's pass rush lanes, and there's lanes of responsibility in the option as well. And you have to stay home and play your lane responsibilities. And Colorado did that very well. Thing is, they're not getting knocked off their feet. They're staying up and pursuing the ball very well. Second down and 11 for the Wildcats. Roberson throws in the flat. Brandon Clark, good reception at the 40. He gets about five yards. And let's take a look at the scouting report for the Wildcats. Well, the first thing that they have to do is, is minimize their penalties. They're averaging 13 penalties for 107 yards per game. That's too many. They want to take care of that today. So far, so good. They want to score first. They're 81 and 7 under Bill Snyder when they score first. They've won 50 of their last 51 when they do that. Executing the red zone. They've been there nine times this season offensively. Have not scored a touchdown yet. Can't settle for field goals. Check at the line here by L. Roberson. Big play here. Third down and six. They need the 34. And now Scoby will move next to Roberson. He'll operate out of the gun. He's got time, and he overthrows his man who was not open. It was Ricky Lloyd. So the punt team will come in for Kansas State. 
two pretty stout defenses today. We talked about the offense off the top, but Kansas State perennially one of the top five defenses in college football. And Colorado, their biggest improvement they believe this year is defensively. Well, they've got uh, stable running backs, but defensively they have uh, they have shown themselves to be more than respectable. And once they get settled down, this is going to be a Donnybrook because they've shown that they can battle at the line of scrimmage. Travis Ooh, Brown. That's way out of the end zone. Yeah, that's not what he wanted there. He kicked it into the crowd. He was looking for the coffin corner job, and he kicked it halfway to Salina. Buffs will have it at the 20 when we come back. No score. How good has Kansas State been the last few years? Well, they've won 11 football games each of the last four years. The only other school in the country that can say that the Florida State Seminoles. Oaks to throw, maybe. This is what he can do. He's going to get 20 plus. How about 28? 28 yards for Oaks on the scramble. Well, Oaks is a powerful runner. He also runs a 4-6, but he runs with some power as well. Pick up the blitz. The blitz is taken care of. Little play fake. Everybody bit. Now all kinds of green carpet for Oaks. Tucks the football, and he says, directs his blockers. Give me a downfield block, and I'll break it big, guys. Everybody, the linebackers, everybody pursued on that play fake. Nice job by Oaks faking the football. Hollowell in motion. Here comes Brown, and he is collared up high. 56 is Terry Pierce, 6'3 and 250 pounds. And he's had to run laterally a lot the last couple of weeks. Not today, Dave. Well, today, Drew, it's different. He's got to come downhill. They have a fullback, and they have a tight end in the box. Two back set with a tight end. Power football. And boy, he just comes down, basically closes it from the outside, and just absolutely collars and corrals. Would look like a rodeo. Just bulldog him to the ground. What you might want to think now is that misdirection play to anchor him a little bit so he doesn't pursue down the line like that. Here comes Bobby Purify. Nowhere to go there. Pierce and John McGraw. It'll be third and 12. You know, we talked about uh, Rock Carpenter, uh, Drew. Brandon Drum, the fullback of Colorado, is a darn good blocker himself. And he threw a nice block that time, a little ISO. Lead blocked by the fullback, and, and, and he, he really did a job. Watch watch number 33 leading purified up inside. There's the block. You got a knockdown block. That's what a fullback's supposed to do. Take the defender off his feet. Colorado needs the 43 at Kansas State. Here comes the blitz. Oaks and Hollowell got tangled up and yeah, there's the late flag, flag. and flag I think it's a pretty good flag. Yeah. Deron Taylor basically tackled Hollowell who was beginning to separate down the middle of the football field. Yeah Tyler got his feet tangled up with him but was he turning around trying to make a play on the football. He knew he was beaten a little bit and Tyler he had a big pass interference call on him last week. There were four major pass interference calls last week for Kansas State against Oklahoma that were pivotal in that one point loss. And this could be another one right here. It's because it's third That's and 11. On third the defense. Baldy put at the spot of the foul. Automatic third first 11. down. You have a pass interference for 15 yards. It's automatic first down. That's, that's another time you don't want to give up that critical penalty. Tyler's in the slot. Watch. Now, is he trying to find the football? Now he's, he's making a play on the man, stripping the man, tangling the feet up well before the arrival of football. Gets the right hand in there and tries to strip. He knew he was in trouble. I think that's a good call, and it's a painful call for Kansas State. We got a screen set up. Purify. And he's tackled from behind, but he got about nine yards. Getting him was Thomas Houchin, the sophomore from Sanger, Texas. Well, purifies the combination of Brown and, 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 and uh, he's more of a slasher. Brown is the bruiser. Now you get the ball to the slasher. This kid's a great athlete, and, and the screen was set up very well. Kansas State rushing the passer. Nicely, the way to slow down a pass rush is to run screens and draws. And get the football to Purify, who is a heck of a high school basketball player, played on a state championship team. Tremendous athletic ability. Brown now the tailback for Colorado. Oh, perfect four for four. That'll work. Here's Brown. 
He's got a block from Hollowell. Chris Brown to the 17-yard line. And now a flag comes in really late, thrown near the line of scrimmage. Somebody's without their helmet. Yeah, without his helmet is Bryant. Yeah, Henry Bryant's missing his cap. And that's going to nullify a fifth penalty on Colorado, nullifies a big game. Ten-yard holding penalty. And, and the tackle that was missed was by Montgomery, a big defensive lineman. And Brown made a miss, showing that power at 6-3, 2 and a quarter. Holding on the offense. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat this second down. Day. Reminiscent of last week. Go yeah. ahead. It, it, but the reverse of it. Watch the missed tackle right there. You can't arm tackle Brown. Even though that's a big defensive lineman, Montgomery, Brown is a bruiser. Very powerful back. And, but that's that's negated. Here comes, watch the helmet right here. Here's, here's where the helmet pops. Whoops. Here goes the headgear. Fortunately, the head stayed attached to the shoulders. So after all that, it's second and eight. I'm saying it's reminiscent of last week. Oklahoma and Kansas State had more than 40 flags thrown. Oaks and Drum couldn't haul it in. Colorado likes to use their backs out of the backfield. It'll be third and eight. You knew something had to give coming in, Dave. You had the number eight running team in the country in Colorado against the number four rush defense team in Kansas State. Right, and I think Colorado is working to be balanced this afternoon, even more so than they have all season long. They want to throw on the early downs. Now they're in a must-throw situation, third and long. You want to throw the football when you want to against Kansas State, not when you have to. That's a, a much tougher scenario. Portland Johnson in the slot to the top. Now in motion. Here's Oaks. He's going to run for a first down. Subtle little move, and he lost the linebacker. First down, Colorado at the 22. That was Ben Lieber. Just froze Ben Lieber with the pump fake, Drew. And, and, and Lieber, once Lieber went off his feet airborne a little bit, Oaks found himself a lot of territory. That's the second big scramble by Oaks. Powerful scramble. Watch Oaks once he comes up to the line of scrimmage now. Lieber's not sure is he over the line of scrimmage or not. Little pump fake, Lieber leaves his feet. And now he's off to the races to the perimeter. Now this kid's got 4'6 speed and benches 380 pounds. That's a nice size speed combination package at the quarterback spot. Two tights for Colorado. They want to run. Not much doing again for Chris Brown. Maybe a couple of yards. Josh Buell involved in the tackle. Well, I'll tell you what. On the left side of that offensive line, what they call the tight side with Gerard Rogers, you put Graham over there. You got three pretty good blockers. And, and Colorado's running to that left side of the offensive line very, very frequently. Rodgers kind of sets the tone at the left tackle spot. Gerard's as good as they've had at the tight guard spot. I'm not saying something because they've had some number ones come out of Colorado. Pressure, Oaks. Graham, what a catch! Touchdown! He readjusted. Graham found the ball, and the safety did not, could not find it. it looked like Proctor got turned around. And Graham made an adjustment to the football. You have to give Oaks a tremendous amount of credit, too, because he put that football up before he wanted to. In the face of a blitz, Oaks said, I have an athlete at tight end. I'm going to put the ball up. He'll adjust to the football, and he'll beat the safety. And he did. They got the matchup they wanted. The big tight end, Graham, in open space against Proctor, the safety, and they cooked it for a touchdown. Jeremy Flores to tack on the extra point. Good snap, good hold, and it is 7-0 Colorado. What a job, because I was looking at Graham. He was completely turned the other way. Yeah, yeah. Got he his head around, and with the soft mitts, he made a great it. catch. One-handed. Yeah, basically <laughs> one hand. Wow. Colorado up early. Man. Daniel Graham in the end zone for the second time this year is 20th catch of the season. This guy is one of the most gifted tight ends in college football, and he just demonstrated why. And Kansas State knows it going in because they do not want to leave him in single coverage. Well, the 20th catch of the season, 15 of them for first downs. That's not only a first down, that's a touchdown. And he's leading all tight ends in the nation in receptions and receiving yards. That is a John Mackey Award candidate right there, written all over him, Daniel Graham. Craig Oaks hung in there, Dave. He took a shot. Oh, he sure did. Pierce lit him up, and, and he threw a nice ball in the face of that heat. 
into the wind. Newman and Lockett are the deep men. And this is Newman with the great wheels. And he'll get to the 30-yard line. Look again at the touchdown throw from Oaks to Graham. Well, Lieber's picked up, but, uh, but here, here Pierce comes clean and hits Oaks. Oaks delivers the football well before he wanted to, but he's got confidence in, in Graham. And there's Lieber being picked up, but the inside blitzer comes free. Double blitz, both linebackers. Graham finds the ball. Proctor doesn't. Proctor got turned around, and Graham made the adjustment to the football. Proctor lost track of Graham once he spun to try to find the ball late. Tremendous throw by Oaks in the face of pressure. Even better adjustment and catch by Graham. Here's Josh Scoby with a nice opening. He gets six or seven, and let's go downstairs and visit with Jim Knox. Knoxy. Okay, Drew, you and Dave were talking about how Craig Oates really took a shot on that last play, but when he got to the back to the bench, he looked at Daniel Graham and said, unbelievable catch. Right now, Oates is just talking to all of his wide receivers. He's telling them, good job. This is a very uplifting Colorado Buffalo team right now that has a lot of confidence, so look out. Well, scoring first is huge because in Manhattan, the last four plus seasons, Kansas State's 26 and one at home. Yeah, they don't lose. Bannon got a piece of the ball. Ball's loose, and the official saying that's incomplete. incomplete. He's saying it's a pass. I, that's not a pass. It went backwards. There's no way that could be a pass. Well, if, it, if it's sideways, it's a pass. It, it, unless it did, it did it go backwards or not. He's saying incomplete pass. So he did not laterally. He did not throw it forward. But he says he. Or, I mean, he did not throw it back. Let's see now. It has to go right down the line. Let's see how this looks. Bannon got the penetration, and Bannon's all over L. Roberson. Now L. Ro yeah, that's straight. That's pretty straight. Yeah, it does look. I, I don't think that's a terrible call. That was close. Well, there's no replay, so they're not talking about that. They're moving the ball about six inches. Respotting the ball. Third down and short for Kansas State. Boy, that would have been a pivotal, pivotal turnover there. I'm not, did Colorado come up with the football when it was on the ground? I didn't see who came up with the ball, but it was waved off right away as an incomplete pass. Lockett and Clark to the near side on third and three. Here comes the blitz. Roberson with time, good throw, and good catch from Brandon Clark. There's the fastball that L. Roberson has. And we got an offensive lineman getting up and limping to the sideline for Kansas State. That's Matt Martin, the left tackle. So you may say the, see the shuffle in the offensive line. But coming in in his stead is Billy Miller. Billy Miller's checking in. Let's see who goes to the left tackle position. On first down, Colorado. 7.3 yards per first down. Kansas State 1.3. First down for Colorado is huge early in this football game once again. On first down, Scobie. Maybe one or two. Close to midfield, Justin Bannon involved again, the 295-pound senior from Fair Oaks, California. Thing about him, Drew, a brown belt in karate. Justin Bannon, he, he, he could be a black belt if he could find the time to uh, take his test. But he's, got a, he's a brown belt in karate, so now he's got quick hands and quick feet. And that's what you need inside as a defensive lineman. Quick hands for the burst and quick to hand placement and quick feet to burst off the line of scrimmage. You were a black belt, weren't you? I got one on right now. It's leather, though. Roberson. That is complete and taking a lick. It's Aaron Lockett delivering the blow. Donald Strickland. Well, that's good ball security right there by Lockett to squeeze the pig. That, that's called good all around. Good throw, yeah. good catch, pretty good defense. Yeah, I mean, that's just, you chalk one up for the offense there. That's excellent execution because defensively you're right in the hunt. But I mean, for him to hold on to that football, you know, and Lockett, obviously not the biggest of people. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's not somebody that, uh, that, you know, goes throwing his weight around. A third and one and a half. Big Joe Hall's come in the game. 33, 6'2", and oh, about 300 pounds or so. Easy. And he gets the rock, and he has the first down. Big Joe. And the crowd loves him. You know, Big Joe's a blob these days, Dave. Yeah, Big Joe. He, I mean, he's, he's the Dennis Rodman of college football, I think. You know, he's uh, he's got a little style going, a little color. 
to that hair. But Joe is a 300-pound guy with very, very quick feet. And there we go. I'll tell you what, I wonder how long it took him to, to do that do. You know, it's blonde, but that's a lot of work right there. I wonder how many hours it goes into making that hair do that tight. I, I know nothing about blonde hair. Or, or my, that kind of hair. Yeah, no. I, I don't have that kind of hair to be able to braid it. And that, that looks like a long process. That took a while. Oh, that's a penalty. You can't have that. That's well, an early start. Early start on Ocean Honarchian, the senior from San Gabriel. Dave, you mentioned it with uh, Miller Martin going out of the game, Miller coming into the game. This is a thin offensive line right now. Before the snap really occurred, is. there was I mean, movement the, in the, the offensive the line. Five yards. The offensive penalty. line has been Eby. Eby has played center. He's played guard. He's played left tackle. Andy Eby, who's playing the center position now, is a very, very, this gentleman right here in the huddle, that's a very, very versatile offensive lineman. He's the tool. He can go up and down the offensive line like an interchangeable drill bit and, and still play effectively. Valuable, valuable guy. Roberson well protected. Good catch by Clark. And he's going to make a few after the catch. Brandon Clark had a breakout game last week. He had five catches, well over 100 yards against Oklahoma. Coming in, he had just seven catches his whole career. Yeah, and he had a 58-yard reception in that game as well. Protection's good. L. Roberson is, is afforded in a nice pocket, and he steps up in it. And that's a, that ball's fairly high, but you have a lot of size in Clark at 6'3 and 220. He's the big receiver. Lockett's the small receiver. They've got a nice blend and mix at the receiver spot. On second and short, here comes option with Roberson. And again, he tries to cut back. And again, he's cut down by Brandon Dabdub this time. Dabdub took one of his tires off. He blew a tire. He just ripped that left shoe right off of L. Roberson. Dabdub threw him for a loss. That's another tackle for loss running the option. Those are equivalent to quarterback sacks. You're now going to backwards off schedule. L. Roberson is very dangerous in the pocket. If you sack him, it's great. He's equally as dangerous running the option. If you tackle him behind the line of scrimmage, that's equally great. 40 seconds, clock moving left in the first quarter. Colorado leading 7-0. Clark and Lockett to the top. Ricky Lloyd to the near side on third and seven. Roberson wants a screen, and there was nobody there. Scobie got tackled in the backfield. Scobie never got out. He did a nice job of, of containing him in the backfield, never presenting himself as, as a potential target. Harris did a good job of tying him up. Hey, David, gray area really for Bill Snyder and Kansas State. They're at the plus 36-yard line. Do you punt? Do you go? Do you try a field goal? And I think they're going to try the long field goal. Yeah, it looks like they're going to try the 53-yarder here. They have some wind at the back. Now, this is the area, once again, you have, to, you have to hit the 7-iron. You can't hit the 3-iron. You have to get the trajectory, get the ball up. These are the ones that are blockable. This is not bright. It's Kyle Altvater, the number two kicker. Ooh, he's got it. He's if hit it pretty enough. well. No, nope, short. But just short. Now, he doesn't have as strong a leg as Jared Bright, but Bright is nursing an injury. So, K-State comes up empty with 20 seconds left in quarter number one. There's Jared Bright. He's the number one punter and kicker for Kansas State. And kickoff guy. And kickoff guy. But he's nursing a hamstring injury. Yeah. And here he was warming up. And we were watching him, Dave, and he, he wasn't hitting the ball well. No, he didn't hit it squarely at all. You could tell by the look on his face after contact that he's not right yet. He, he grimaced a little bit. Here's Bobby Purify. And he'll get about seven yards to the 42-yard line. And that should be the final snap of the first quarter. Craig Oaks, up until that play, had accounted for 95 of Colorado's 105 yards. And the first chapter is closed in Manhattan, Kansas. And Colorado leads the Wildcats 7-0. Daniel Graham from Craig Oaks. Through 15 minutes, Colorado leading number 12, Kansas State, 7-0. Back upstairs with Dave Lapham. I'm Drew Goodman. And Colorado wanted to be physical. They wanted to get the running game going and mix in the pass and play good defense. So far, they got an A. Oh, they, they really, they're playing exceptionally well. Craig Oaks has been a huge factor, but now we get the takeaway right there. McGraw makes the interception, picks Oak off, Oaks off. 
That's the one thing that Colorado wanted to avoid was the turnovers. Kansas State in the last eight plus games, that's their 29th takeaway. Big time by McGraw. John McGraw picks it off, returns it 22 yards. The former walk on. He's a senior, great student. And he just sits in center field and he goes up and makes a play. And he gets a little escort on the way back. So Kansas State set up at the Colorado 42. The first big mistake from Colorado today. How about that? Interception almost with regularity by Kansas State's defense. Lockets open and oh. broken up nicely by Phil Jackson. He went underneath Lockett for a second. Excuse me, Lloyd, for a second, it looked like it was going to get over the top of Jackson. Uh, the intended target wasn't Lockett, it was Ricky Lloyd. Well, I, I think if this ball was underthrown a little bit by L. Roberson, and this is his strength, the deep ball, but because the, the angle is taken by Jackson because he sees the ball slightly underthrown, he knows he can come underneath and make a play on the football. He had position to stay over the top, but he read the ball extremely well and, and made took the proper angle to deflect it. Roberson out of the gun with time. Got a man, lock it, oh. drops the football oh. to 15. You don't see that frequently. Nope. And that's a mental mistake. How about El Roberson? He's been right on the money with most every throw. And, and the thing about him, not only his accuracy, but the tight spiral. Does he throw a catchable pass? And, and what you have to do is get your hands out, catch the ball with your hands. Lockett tried to cradle it into his chest. And once it starts messing with those shoulder pads, it ricochets. Got to get your hands out and catch the ball with two hands. Extend those paws. Lockett, Derek Evans, Brandon Clark to the top on third and 10. They need the 32. Here comes Roberson. And he's going to be stopped about three yards shy. Flying up was Donald Strickland to make a play. I think this is four down territory, Drew. I think Bill Snyder agrees with you. I, I mean, I don't think you don't punt it because if it goes in the end zone, you only pick up, you know, you only pick up 15, 16 yards. Your field goal kicker doesn't have enough leg. He showed it on the last 50 plus yard attempt. I think you go for it right here on fourth and three. Yeah, and, they, and they'd be kicking it, as you said, into the wind. And he was short with the wind at his back on a 53-yarder earlier. That's right. And if you don't make it, Colorado has the football at the 35. Not that big a deal. Uh -oh, Roberson. Uh -oh. And he throws a pick at the 40. It's picked off by Marcus Harris, the sophomore from Grand Junction, Colorado. That's the second time he has made a tremendous play on the screen. One time on third down, Roberson could not find Scobie because Harrison delayed him, held him up in the backfield. This time, Harris reads screen, he, and he comes off and makes a play. Look at him read screen and separate, make a play. Tremendous effort. Trying to get the ball to big Joe Hall, and Harris says, huh, that's mine. That's not Joe Hall's football. I'm reading screen. I, I feel the tackles trying to, trying to influence, him, influence me, and I'm not going to bite. And then Joe treated him like a donut, almost devoured him. <laughs> Oates gives to Brown, and he rumbles for four. You know, one of the things you wonder about, and from a Kansas State perspective would worry about, Dave, is, is the letdown. Emotionally, they played a 38-37 game against Oklahoma. They were distraught after. Yeah, they were, but their history and tradition has, has spoken that they bounce back. You know, they've had disappointing losses to Nebraska, disappointing losses to uh, Oklahoma in the past. They haven't lost two regular season games in a row in a long time since October of 94. That's a long time. Brown trying to cut back and does a nice job. He got about four or five, setting up third and short. Terry Pierce and John McGraw. It, around the tackle and interestingly enough back in October of 94 they lost two straight in the regular season they lost to Nebraska and then Colorado the following week so here's Colorado presenting themselves as another tough obstacle to Kansas State after a, a bitter loss to Oklahoma 38 37 in Norman last week Colorado will go with two tight ends Quinn Sipniewski a line up to the near side they need a full two yards Brown 
Cutting it back, does it on his own. He spun off contact in the backfield and got the first down. Yeah, he had he had Lieber and, and Fagans were there to, to tackle him for no gain. And Brown with a tight pirouette, a tight spin to his right, to the inside, got him the first down. Brown is a great downhill runner. You know, they call him a bruiser. And he's, he's following Drum. Drum picks up Proctor, and there he goes spinning off, off Fagans. And actually, it was a down lineman. It's Henry Bryant. Yeah, Bryant that he spun off of as well. Nice tight spin move. And here's a counter. He breaks another tackle and gets a yard or two. Melvin Williams brings him down. Also, Thomas Houchin is there. Yesterday, we were talking to Craig Oaks, and he grew up in the Boulder area. And we asked him about returning Colorado to national prominence. Uh, that's the reason I came here, because I knew that uh, Coach Barnett was going to lead this program back to where it should be. And that's at the top of the country. And, uh, you know, I, I think everybody in that locker room believes in that. And uh, as you said earlier, this type of game, to get a victory here would go a long way in getting that back. Colorado, Dave, on the cusp of the top 25. They've been 26th, if you will, in the AP the last two weeks. Here's Brown. And maybe a yard or two. It'll be third and seven. Milton Proctor, 14, came up from a strong safety spot. There's Proctor. He's played a lot of football in his four years at Kansas State. Well, Colorado doesn't feel they're getting enough respect, Drew, for what they've done so far. You know, Fresno State's a good football team. That's their only loss, a two-point loss with five giveaways. Interception at the end of the game nullified their opportunity to pull out a victory in that football game. And Fresno State has proven to be tough competition. They're in the top 15 in the country. And then they've won three in a row and playing well today. They feel like they should be in that top 25, these football players. Big down here, blitz coming. Oaks hangs in, throws in the flat. Ooh. And was that picked off on oh. the deflection? Now it goes out of bounds. And it'll be fourth down, looking for Cedric Cormier. And Tyler almost came up with the deflection off of Cormier's hands, but not quite. But big play by the Colorado defense to nullify an Oaks interception with a takeaway of their own. Runs a little pivot route through his hands, watch Tyler dive, can't quite come up with the football in the field to play. Nice effort, though. Mariscal to punt and the very dangerous Aaron Lockett. He led the nation in punt returns last year, took three back for scores. He's at the 10. Averaged almost 23 yards per punt return last year. That's ridiculous. It's going to work out well, I think. Could work out real well inside the 10 to about the seven yard line. Corey Massoni down on special teams to cover it up. Seven nothing, Colorado. The Bluemont Bell on the campus of Kansas State University in Manhattan. Colorado leading seven nothing with Dave Lapham and Jim Knox. I'm Drew Goodman. Kansas State backed up at their own seven yard line and they'll give to Rock Cartwright and look at the he can go to the 12 yard line. I love this guy, Dave. 5'8", maybe, 245 and he is what you want at fullback. Oh, well, he's all heart. He blew a tire as well. Rock's got to get that tire back on, but this guy is all heart. He's got a capital C stamped on that heart for competitor. And Rock is is definitely the man. Look at 5'8", 242 pounds. You talk about stack. If he were six feet tall, he'd weigh about 280. If he were 6'3", he'd weigh about 310. Roberson, he wants to run it. And he's going to swivel through to the 20-yard line. That is a very important first down for K-State. What's that remind you of? A little Michael Bishop action there. Yep. Design quarterback run out of the shotgun. Key block by the Rock. The Rock at Gibraltar, Rock Cartwright. Check out Rock right here. There's the collision, kick out block. Nice little trap by the lineman. It's basically the power O. The off, the off guard keys the fullback's block, and who's running the football is the quarterback. So in the shotgun, it's only a one back set with Rock, but it's really two backs, because they're such a great runner. The total offense today favoring Colorado right now. But just a touchdown separating the two schools. And Scobie will get a couple of yards to the 22. Dave, congratulations. You have your uh, 
first kill of the day, you, you knocked off that uh, bumblebee that yeah. was bugging us the first quarter. It was it was into our into our Dr. Pepper. Yeah. You know, this we, is the Dr. Pepper Big 12 game of the week, but we're stingy about our Dr. Pepper. We are stingy about that, and you defended Absolutely. our Dr. Peppers. I just hope that I didn't, glory. I didn't rouse the whole nest. I'm hopeful you didn't either, because you're <laughs> fighting them by yourself. Is that the queen bee? That's a, that, that doesn't look like a queen to me. No. Okay, good. That was a worker bee. Second and eight. Roberson wants to run again. And Roberson will dive close to a first down. They're going to mark him a little bit short. Phil Jackson got a piece of him. You know, everybody wants to compare L. Roberson naturally to Michael Bishop, who was a runner-up to the Heisman Trophy a couple of years back. There are similarities, but he's different. He is. He's, he's not as big and powerful as Michael Bishop. He's a little bit more lithe. And he's, uh, he's very nimble, very athletic. But he's not as thick-legged and powerful throwing arm or running ability as Michael Bishop. Speaking of thick-legged, Big Joe's in the game, and he gets the football. Here's Hall, and he's going to have a first down. He got just enough. And as they spot the football, we'll get it downstairs to Jim Knox. Knox, He's still not in the game. Matt Martin, the big left tackle for Kansas State. You may recall, came off a couple of series ago. Now. Kansas State, one of the few teams in college football that does not disclose injuries, but from our vantage point, they were working on his left knee. He got on the stationary bike, tried to work it off, then he started walking along the sidelines. Right now, he's just watching on the sidelines, but it does not appear to be serious. We'll see if Martin can get back in this game. I believe uh, Jim and Dave, he was battling a, a leg injury coming in. A lot of the offensive linemen were nicked up for K-State. Uh -oh. Scobie Ooh. almost escapes. Hanging on was Michael Lewis. Yeah, that's pretty sure tackler there. In fact, Michael Lewis has not missed a tackle this season. He's got three interceptions. There haven't been any completions in his zone area of responsibility defensively. And he's got three interceptions returning one of them for a touchdown. But he's leaving the game right now. Looked like he dinged that right shoulder up a little bit. We're hanging that right arm after he made that tackle. Medford Moore has come in to replace him. Moore's had a couple of ACL surgeries, still recovering from that. Here's Scobie, and he's going to have a first down to the 41. And Kansas State trying to find their offensive personality against the Colorado defense that has been very good, and now they're finding it in the run game. And they're doing what Kansas State has done for years and years, their power game, pulling the backside lineman, keying the block of Rock Cartwright, and just running the ball between the tackles with some authority. Coming into the game, they were fourth in the country. They're not about to abandon their running game. Here comes a blitz. It's picked up nicely. Roberson has time. And down the field, it's complete to the 31-yard line. Brandon Clark again. Looks like another injury to a Colorado defensive back at the conclusion of the play, Phil Jackson. There's a flag down on the play. Phil Jackson, after he got involved, Making the play looks like he jammed or it looks like he might have dislocated something on his left hand or or has some sort of a wrist injury but grabbing that left hand Clark though always slides to the ground to present himself as a as a target a big body that knows how to corral the football this flag was thrown After very the play late it ended unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense That's on a did Clark spike the ball Dave well, here's I, I, I didn't I don't know I was I was watching Jackson's reaction. Clark runs a double move. He ends up coming to the to the post, and, and Jackson as he as he rolled over the top of him just had an injury on the turf, and yet and, and Clark in, in in happiness gets up and and puts an exclamation point on his effort by by just flipping the football away. I mean, didn't spike it, yeah. just flipped it away because he doesn't give it to an official. He gets flagged. I'll tell you what, if that was the call, that's shaky. That's very very shaky. That's. Come on, guys. You know, let so you have to walk three steps and pick a ball up. Come yeah, on. Let him play. Yeah. Now from the 47, Roberson comes to run again. Colorado has him strung out, and he's still able to use his wheels to get near the boundary for a couple of yards. Naturally, K-State wants the 15 back on right. a potential late hit. Well, we got L. Roberson at the quarterback position, the quarterback running game once again. And what we've got, watch Rock and watch the right guard, both of them pulling. Rocks the lead blocker and watch Roberson, Robertson and they get a double team on the linebacker that gets L Roberson going and he, and he kicks it to the sideline 
and let's see where the hit does it occur out of bounds boy that's that's dicey that's not a not a smart thing to do to pile on Roberson as he's in the five yard big white boundary they're out of bounds that's Michael Lewis so he's back in the football game second and eight Roberson play action in trouble now steps up and wow. that is knocked away big collision as he was looking for Lockett and coming up and blowing a kiss was Donald Strickland. Boy, did he ever. And I'm not sure the ball was tipped before its arrival to Lockett. If the ball was tipped, the fans want interference, but, it, but, if, but if it was deflected, there's no interference called as Tufts, the linebacker, get his hand on the football. Here's Tufts. Here's Tufts. He's dropping into his zone. He gets airborne. Yes, he reroutes the ball. No pass interference at that point. Once the ball is touched and deflected, Lockett can get destroyed, and he did. 5.55 to go in the first half. Third and eight. K-State needs the 36 of Colorado. And he was trying to change the play, and Brandon Clark wasn't getting the information so it's a timeout for the Wildcats Colorado continues to lead now word from Sitco we know you Big 12 football is brought to you by Dr. Pepper Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better the Kansas State Gardens here in Manhattan Kansas Drew Goodman, Dave Lapham, Jim Knox, 5.55 to go in the first half. Colorado 7, K-State nothing. Third and eight from the Colorado 44. Mel Roberson checking the play at the line of scrimmage again. Colorado showing blitz, and they come with it. Roberson looking for his tight end, and it's broken up. And Nick Warren had his mitts on the football for a moment. Pretty good coverage by Michael Lewis. So I guess uh, he still hasn't allowed a completion. Yeah, Michael Lewis wanted pass interference on the big tight end. Michael Lewis got up and said, hey, I had a shot at that football. The big fella's pushing me. Nick Warren, 6'7", 255 pounds. Lewis giving up a lot of size, but and, and he, I can see why Lewis was complaining. Nick Warren had that left arm out there extended trying to separate himself from Lewis. I can see Lewis's beef a little bit. Travis Brown will punt. Roman Hollowell is a great return man. He's back at the 10. Well, that's out of the end zone, too. Yeah, he's not going to get a chance. Uh, Brown's got to get a gauge on a, man, on his foot here. Choke it down a yeah, little bit. <laughs> he's just blasting him out of the end zone. 43-yard punt, but a net of just 23. Colorado leading seven to nothing. A uh, few plays back, Phil Jackson in coverage, trying to get to Brandon Clark dove, and Davey looked like he rolled over on his hand. And yeah. He's gone off to the locker room. Could be either a wrist or a hand injury or a finger, but something to that right, that right appendage, that's for sure. Get an update from Jim Knox in a moment. Oaks throws it to Cortland Johnson in the flat. And McGraw knocks him down after a nine-yard pickup. And here is the aforementioned Jim Knox. All right, Drew, Phil Jackson was in a great deal of pain. They put a little soft cast, a rubber device, on his left hand. It is his left hand. They took him into the locker room. They're going to do x-rays. We'll see what happens with Phil Jackson. Now, on a little bit of better news here for the Colorado Buffalo defense, Michael Lewis, who did get back into the game, had a stinger and made that good play on defense. So Michael Lewis back in. Phil Jackson could be out the rest of the game. Game. All right, Jim, Cortland Johnson gets the first down. Uh-oh, little extracurricular. See if we have an offset. Well, Pierce getting together with Andre Girard. And, and that was a matchup that uh, that was worth watching all day, too. One of the better defensive players against the best offensive lineman. And after the fact, a little push and shove and see after if it offsets. After the play had ended, personal foul on the defense. That's a 15-yard wow. penalty, automatic first down. That's a, that's a loss of poise by Pierce. And I don't know if Gerard got a first shot in and Pierce retaliated. Usually the second guy gets caught, or if Gerard just said something that upset Pierce and Pierce threw a shot at him. But either way, he cost his team 15 big ones. And look who's in the game for Colorado. For the first time this year, Marcus Houston. Many recruiting analysts felt a year and a half ago when he came to Colorado, he was the number one running back in the country. Prepped at Thomas Jefferson High in Denver, and he had a great start to his career, but then got hurt last year. So now he's a redshirt freshman, and he gets the football. 
And he's going to lose a couple of yards. Kansas State swarming to the football. Ben Lieber leading the way, 52. The senior backer from Vermilion, South Dakota. Well, Marcus Houston's got some rust and dust to knock off. There's no question about that. But this kid is a home run threat. Every time he touches the football, whether you give it to him in the running game or throw it to him as a receiver out of the backfield, he checks back out now. It's, it's kind of tough for him, really, to get back into the flow of things with the four-back rotation. It's hard to get enough snaps to get in the groove. Well, from a coach's standpoint, it's a good problem to have. No doubt. Oaks with time and Ooh. nearly threw a pick. Deron Tyler came back on the football and had his mitts on it. Actually, it was Fagans. Was it Fagans? Yeah. Excuse me, Petey Fagans. Yeah, Fagans closed on the ball well. Good route recognition and, and closed on it very, very quickly. Trying to get the ball, a little, little comeback pattern. Drive Fagans off the ball, Cormier, and, and, and come back to it. Fagans says, I know this comeback route. I'm breaking on the football, too. Can't quite come up with the pick before he falls out of bounds. Third and 11 for Colorado from their own 49. They send Hollowell and McCoy to the near side. Blitz coming. Oaks. Oh, oh man, no. he had a touchdown to Roman Hollowell, but he let him too much. Wow. Hollowell was all by himself. And Craig Oaks knows it. Yeah, Craig Oaks knows that he lost an opportunity there. Hollowell was off to the races because he is a big play waiting to happen is Hollowell. The blitz is picked up very effectively by Colorado. Everybody does a good job. Oaks has no vision impairment whatsoever and he overthrows Hollowell by a good five yards. Boy, there's an opportunity. Put a star next to that play in the play-by-play -play sheet because Colorado should have seven more points and be up 14-0. Here's a, sh here's a fake. Point. And it's not going to go. Kansas State covered it up. They snapped it to the short man. And that was Robert Hodge, the third team quarterback. Who's got tremendous speed and obviously can throw the football. And Gary Barnett not happy with Hodge. Looks like Hodge may have aborted the play. Hodge is explaining to Barnett what happened and Gary Barnett saying it was still there. Execute the play that's called. Don't think too much. But Hodge, Nowhere to go at the football in his estimation. Season opening, he can run a sub 4 4 40, but Kansas State runs well in their kicking game, and they nullified Hodge big time. Boy, what a sequence of events. Losing an opportunity for a touchdown and, and, a, and aborted or an unsuccessful fake punt gives Kansas State a short field. L. Roberson looked at the defense and said that play won't work, and he's going to go over and talk to Bill Snyder. A reminder, next Saturday afternoon, we'll see the Texas Longhorns. They're in Dallas taking on Oklahoma this week, but the number five team led by Chris Sims will head to Stillwater, Oklahoma, to take on the Oklahoma State Cowboys, led by speedy running back Tatum Bell. That's next Saturday, 12.30 in the East, 9.30 out West. The Dr. Pepper Big 12 Game of the Week, Texas and Oklahoma State. Yeah, I think what Hodge was was going to be instructed to do was throw the football out here to his one of his kill men because there's soft there's nobody there there's soft coverage soft cushion underneath getting there but I, I think that that was what he was supposed to do initially and if you got the ball there quickly enough now it's up to that person to make one guy miss on the on the perimeter I'm just guessing that's sheer guesswork but I think the coaching staff felt that there was no immediate coverage. If Hodge got it out there quickly enough, running underneath wouldn't have gotten there in time. And they would have had a big play. Because uh, Gary Barnett was all over uh, Hodge as he came to the sideline saying, you know, why did you abort the pass and run the football like that? Clark and lock it to the top. Here's the short side option. And again, option goes nowhere. A loss of yardage. Justin Bannon, who's been all over the place from his nose tackle spot, tackles Roberson for a two-yard loss. Well, one thing that Colorado wanted to do defensively was to gang up on L. Roberson tackling him. And they have had quite a few bodies around L. Roberson. Oklahoma did not defend the option well last week. L. Roberson broke a lot of tackles. Colorado has been sure with their tackling and gang tackle today. Oh. 
Roberson all day to throw the football, and it's deflected and intercepted downfield. And the guy who was, uh, it's Robbie Robinson. I thought it was a six for a moment. Robbie Robinson, the Joe, strong safety. Joey Johnson deflected it. Joey Johnson made a big play. Jay Sean Sykes is replacement. And there's a flag. That's ridiculous, too. Uh, they that's talking the, that's a celebration? The make, that's the make good. Oh, geez, a celebration there. But Joey Johnson is, is, the, is the linebacker that got back in his pass drop, deflected it, and the interception's made. I'll tell you what that was. Not only was it a make good, but that referee an interception was Colorado influenced. After the play had ended, unsportsmanlike conduct on the intercepting team. Let me tell you 15 what. 15-yard penalty. That official was influenced by the crowd. Yeah, and, and he's right in front of the Kansas State bench. Let, let's take a look, though. What, there's Joey Johnson right there. Watch him get his hand on the football, underthrown a little bit, and, and deflects it. And, and then the play is made. Easy interception after the, the, the deflection by, by, Robins, uh, by Robinson right there. And, and Joey Johnson, in for Jay Sean Sykes, makes a, makes a nice play. El Roberson, once again, underthrows the football. Deflection, interception, the old tip drill. Defenses do it all day, every day. Chris Brown, hit by Milton Proctor. He got about five or so. Terry Pierce also involved. Joey Johnson has done a nice job so far in well, place of Jay Sean Sykes. And tip a cap to the entire Colorado defensive football team. You know, their offense doesn't take, up a touch, take advantage of a touchdown opportunity to Hollowell. Fake punt the next play doesn't work. They get a short field. What do they do? Come up with a takeaway. I mean, that's tremendous defense. Colorado's defensive football team playing at a high level today. Brown spills for a couple. It'll be third and short. And Jim Knox has more news on Phil Jackson. All right, Drew, Phil Jackson through for the game. They got the x-rays back. Two broken bones in his left hand. Ooh. He is through for the day. Jeez. That's not good. When you make a one-point landing on the turf and all your body weight comes down on your hand, sometimes you do get the snap, crackle, and pop of the bones, unfortunately. So Clyde Sorrell, who's the dime corner, will have to play quite a bit and that's what that affects the ripple effect of those type of injuries it affects their dime package it affects special teams it affects all kinds of things that's why injuries to Jay Sean Sykes and let's talk about Minardi they lose their best off the, their best wide receivers well and another injured Colorado yeah, player you got, you got two guys hurt yeah it looks like they collided during the course of the play at about the 18 yard line they're both in a, on a knee trying to get themselves squared away hopefully just maybe not coconuts. It, it's Gerard and Marwan Hage, the two guards. Yeah, hopefully they just collided, and it's nothing more than trying to work away, work off a headache. Hage kind of rotating that right arm a little bit, like maybe he's got a little bit of a stinger, trying to adjust that right shoulder. And Mr. Gerard is a load. You don't want to collide with him, and you don't know he's coming at you. I don't even know if you want to collide with him if you do know he's coming at you. That's true. But this is a contact sport. Yeah, wow. So we got to collide. <laughs> we got to collide at some point. <laughs> That's true. You and I don't anymore. No, no. I, I, I love the fact that I feel so much better in the morning after a game. I don't get out of bed thinking that I had, I could hit from behind in a car wreck or something. No more soreness. And you look good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Still. Third and one. Brown. We'll have a first down, and he took a pretty good shot from Terry Pierce. He runs hard. Yeah, they just keep coming up with linebackers here. Remember Mark Simino? He was terrific. And Joe Kelly. Joe, uh, yeah, Jeff Kelly was a, no, was a Jeff terrific Kelly, player. Yeah. Look at this guy. And the Oaks uh, brothers, Craig Oaks' cousins played here. And, and Pierce, whew, man, you talk about a shot. You want to know, you know how much they think of Terry Pierce? His teammates voted him a captain. He's a sophomore. That says a lot. That says a lot about everything he does. Weight room, locker room, on the field, the whole nine yards, classroom. Colorado's got to get in a two-minute mode with a minute and a half to go. They fake a reverse, and Brown will get a couple of yards as they keep it on the ground. Josh Buell makes the tackle. He's another sophomore linebacker from Mesquite, Texas. Now, I think what Colorado's going to do here, Drew, they have a 7 nothing lead with about a minute and 10 seconds to go in the half. They don't want to make any mistakes in this side of the field and, and give Kansas State another short field opportunity. So they're not really in a hurry-up mode, trying to move the football, trying to get into field goal range. They don't want to take a chance on turning it over. I think they're going to play this very conservatively through the conclusion of the half, going to the locker room at halftime and make the necessary adjustments. Yeah, they're in no apparent hurry. Second and eight. 
And they'll keep it on the ground, and Brown will get to the 30-yard line for a couple of more. For an update on what we have for you in store at halftime, here again, Jim Knox. All right, thank you, Drew. Coming up on the Sonic America's Drive-In Halftime Report, we'll take a look at our Southwestern Bell Big 12 Players of the Week. We'll check the Big 12 scoreboard. Also, a report from Nebraska on tonight, Nebraska Cornhusker and Iowa State Cyclo game. That's coming your way at halftime. Drew? Okay, Jim, how about Iowa State? Uh, Seneca Wallace last week, what, 18 straight completions? That's, that's incredible. Seneca Wallace, you know, Bill McCartney's got, got uh, uh, Dan McCartney has got, had got it going over at Iowa State. There's no question about it. I mean, they, they went to their, uh, won their bowl game last year, won nine football games, finished 25th in the nation, and, and this year they're starting off undefeated 3-0. Colorado calls a timeout with five seconds to go. It's third down as we take a look at the top 20 in college football, really the top 10. Fresno State, the again. only team to knock off Colorado this year is number 10. But look at this, 3-4-5, Oklahoma, Nebraska, Texas. 12 is Kansas State, 24 is A&M. And 26 is Colorado. Is Colorado. Just on the cusp. So if they make it in, you've got six of the 12 teams in the Big 12 in the top 25. That's half, isn't it? Six over 12, least common denominator, one over two. Very good, Mrs. Dave. Riley. You ready to take your my SATs fractions, again? My fractions were there in about the fifth grade, fourth grade. Maybe they, it was my sophomore They grade. were there because here's a little known fact about Dave Lapham. You have got into Harvard. Yes, I did. You did, and you turned it down, you got as, and as your son did. Yeah, can you believe that? Yeah, but I have a nephew know, that was smart enough to go, so the, he's right, there. The, the only father-son combination in, in I guess, uh, Probably. history that both turned down. How about the crimson. That? And, and my mother and my son's grandmother was not the least bit happy, I can tell you <laughs> that right now. Well, it turned out for you. Yeah, it turned out okay. How about this football game, though? Seven zip. Uh -huh. We got a defensive battle. Well, we knew we had two pretty good defenses coming in. Wow. And here's Brown. Wow. And Kansas State gets them on the ground at the 47-yard line, and both schools will head off to the locker room. When was the last time Kansas State didn't have Shut a point yeah. for 30 minutes? Wow. That is remarkable. Craig Oaks in Colorado, they scored. When Oaks hooked up with tight end Daniel Graham, that's it. Seven to nothing is our score. And let's get it downstairs. Jim Knox with Gary Barnett. Jim. Okay, thank you, Drew. Right now, Gary Barnett going through an interview right now with the radio. You know, let's see what, listen in. You feel like you're a little bit of control of the game. I mean, I think our defense is doing a great job of stopping them, uh, and we can move the ball. We've shot ourselves in the foot so many times here that we, we should have another seven or, eight or more points on the board. But I think our guys are playing hard, and I think that, that uh, this is a game that we just keep playing like this. We're going to be just fine. Coach, you got to be pleased the way your defense is playing right now. Only 20 yards for L. Roberson. Yeah, I'm really pleased with the way our defense is playing. And uh, as soon as we get wind out some of our mistakes, smooth them out here at halftime, we're going to be fine. All right, thank you, Coach. Drew? All right, Jim, thanks very much. Gary Barnett's team leading 7 to nothing in Manhattan, Kansas. Coming up next, the Sonic America's Drive-In Halftime Report. Sonic America's Drive-In Halftime Report. Back in Manhattan, Kansas at Memorial Stadium, we're at halftime in Colorado, leading Kansas State at the break by the score of seven to nothing. And hi again, everyone. I am Jim Knox. We will kick off the Sonic America's Drive-In Halftime Report with our Southwestern Bell Big 12 Players of the Week. With that, we will start on the offensive side of the football, and that honor goes to Iowa State quarterback Seneca Wallace. Last week, what a game for the Iowa State quarterback going against the Baylor Bears. Cyclones quarterback set three Big 12 conference records by hitting 22 of 24 passes for 294 yards and four touchdowns. That led Iowa State to the 41 to nothing victory over the Baylor Bears. And our defensive player of the week for Southwestern Bell, that is Nebraska linebacker Scott Shanley. Last week against Missouri, Shanley had four pass breakups along with three tackles to help the Huskers roll by Missouri 36 to three. And this week we unveil our Big 12 play of the week and that pertains to Eric Crouch, Nebraska quarterback. Watch him go against Missouri. Nebraska's backed up. Oh, man, Crouch escapes. 
Hit him on the first wow. down. What a run by Eric Krauts. That is our Big 12 play of the week. Coming up, Dave's coaching tip. Dave Lapham goes over the option with Kansas State quarterback L. Roberson. Stay with us. Back in Manhattan, Kansas. Kansas State band performing at halftime and at half. Colorado leading Kansas State by the score of 7 to nothing, And welcome back to the Sonic America's Drive-In Halftime Report. This week in Dave's coaching tips, Big Dave Lapham goes over the quarterback option with Kansas State QB, L. Roberson. <laughs> Today we're talking option. Kansas State runs it as well as anybody. Great decision making by L. Roberson, the quarterback. And our fullback today is John Robertson, and our tailback is Andy Eby, and he'll show us the decision making process as he goes down the line of scrimmage executing the option. Let's take a look at it, guys. We'll get our defensive end and safety L. Show us what, what we're talking about. On the option, our first read is off the end. So I'm down. We're reading the end. If he, if he falls, flows, I pull it. We come around. And the safety comes, he takes full, takes tail back. I'm going up and running down the field. All right, what's another look here in the option? Now, you want to have the football in your hands if possible. You yeah. want to hold on to it. But what happens if it's taken away from you? Let's take a look at that. Come down again, down. He takes full back. We pull, come down. Safety takes me, pitch it off, let my tail back do the work. All right, so what the option does, it spreads the field, spreads the defense out. It's, it's giving us an extra man downfield, you know. We take away the, the end, and, you know, we out there two against one with the safety. And if he comes for me, I'll pitch it. If he stays, you know, I'll take it up and go. All you young quarterbacks running the option, good decisions are key. Coming up next on the Sonic America's Drive-In Halftime Report, we'll check the Big 12 scoreboard in a report from Nebraska on tonight's Cornhuskers-Iowa State game. Stay with us. Back at Memorial Stadium in Manhattan, Kansas, halftime festivities winding down. Right now, Colorado leading K-State at the break by the score of 7 and nothing. Some huge matchups going on in the Big 12 today. Already one game underway. Texas A&M at home trying to stay perfect on the season against Baylor. No score early in the first. Now, later today at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Oklahoma against Texas. The Sooners and Horns going undefeated, ranked in the top five. Tonight, Texas Tech will be at home against Kansas. Oklahoma State entertains Missouri and Iowa State travels to Nebraska. With more on this matchup, let's head to Lincoln, Nebraska and join Joel Myers and James Lofton. Snoxy, it's a matchup and one of the very best in the Big 12 this weekend between two undefeated teams and two red-hot quarterbacks for Iowa State Seneca Wallace. And we had an opportunity to talk to head coach Frank Solich about his quarterback, Eric Crouch. He's just a uh, tremendous young man and... Um, you know, you always appreciate uh, a player's athletic ability. Uh, if you're a coach, if, if you're a fan, if you're a teammate. Um, but I think all the people um, that know Eric also appreciate what, what he's all about off the field uh, as well. So a quality individual on the field and off the field. I'm joined now by James Lofton, a slow start this year for Eric Crouch over the first couple of games, but he has picked it up against both Notre Dame and Missouri last week is Eric Crouch a legitimate Heisman Trophy candidate? I think without a doubt, when you play for a top five team that you have to be considered a Heisman Trophy candidate, especially if you play the quarterback position. And I know everybody wants to throw the ball around the field and you dink and dunk and you get the short pass, the long run. But how about a quarterback who really earns it, who gets in the end zone by himself? 36 touchdowns the two previous years on the ground for Eric Crouch, and he's doing more of the same this year. And just a so-so 95-yard run last week oh, yeah. against the University of Missouri. Two hot quarterbacks, Seneca Wallace, going up against Eric Crouch as we rejoin now Jim Knox. All right, thank you, Joel. Coming up next, Drew and Dave recap first half highlights between Colorado and Kansas State as the Sonic America's Drive and Halftime Report continues.
At halftime, Colorado leading Kansas State 7 0. You have to go back 93 games. Last time, K State was shut out at halftime. Back upstairs with Dave Lapham. I'm Drew Goodman. And interestingly enough, it was the Colorado game in 93 right here in Manhattan. It ended in a 16 16 tie. With seven points on the board, the story of this game has been defense. Oh, it really has. I mean, both sides of the football. You're not surprised about Kansas State's defense. They've been in the top five the last four years in total defense, and they really run. They're highlighted by their linebackers. They run around the football field. Pierce making a couple of big hits against Colorado in the first half. Colorado's defense has been equally effective, though, and it has started with their one-gap penetrating defensive line. They have given no running lanes to Kansas State whatsoever, and they have shut L. Roberson down, particularly while he's been running the option. I have not seen Kansas State's option been thrown for a loss as many times as it was in the first half. Tackle for loss in the option is like a quarterback sack when you throw in the football. You know, and talking to both head coaches yesterday, they said a mistake in the kicking game ultimately could decide this. So far, both teams have been safe and sound in the kicking game. Who knows in the final 30 minutes. We're back after this. We're set to start the third quarter in Manhattan, Kansas. Colorado leading Kansas State 7 0, and Jim Knox is with Bill Snyder. Jim? Yeah. We gotta go. Okay. All right, Coach, five penalties for 58 yards in the first half. L. Robinson held at just 20 yards. How do you jump start the team in the second half? Well, we'll find out real quick because we're getting ready to start it. We just have to, we have to be assignment sound. We gotta eliminate the mistakes, obviously. We gotta throw the ball a little bit better. We got some people open. We gotta be able to get it to them when they're open. And if that takes place, then we'll be all right. If not, we're in trouble. Thanks, Coach. Best of luck in the second half. Pat Brome will kick off for Colorado. Aaron Lockett back at his own two-yard line. And this hits a stiff wind. Lockett will give way to Terrence Newman. And Newman will not be able to get around the corner. Dropped at the 15-yard line. Joey Johnson is down covering the kick in addition to getting a lot of snaps at the weak side linebacker. Halftime numbers. Dave, what jumps out at you? Right there. Colorado holding Kansas State to 60 yards rushing and they were they were uh, fourth in the nation coming in and they run the ball for 113 that equates to 226 yards rushing Kansas State fourth in that regard so Colorado won the running game like they wanted to I mean their game plan which we'll get to in a little bit their game plan scouting report is, is coming into fruition big time for the Buffaloes early on well, it's interesting also Kansas State decided to go with the wind here in the third quarter right. not the fourth quarter exactly that, that's how the game started isn't it? <laughs> same, same same two as well same tandem yeah Brandon Dab do exact I mean it's here we go again it, and if, the, if the half goes the entire unfolds the same way the first half did for Colorado the current offsides on the defense five yard penalty remains first down I, I don't know what Dab do I'm not sure if he thinks there's some flinching going on but he just absolutely comes across the line of scrimmage and gets a I used to hate this as a lineman when a defensive lineman dunk you like that on your posterior unceremoniously I hated that it's like you're defenseless you can't move because if you move penalties nullified yeah. got him again Yeah, they moved again a little jumpy and, and all it is Drew it's a hard count voice inflection by L Roberson what he's doing at the line of scrimmage is non rhythmic if it's on three the third hut he's at the line of scrimmage instead of going hut hut. Hut on the defense, five-yard penalty, and that's enough for a first down. He's getting up there and he's going, hut, hut, and jump, getting them to jump on that second one non-rhythmically. They can't listen to the quarterback. Drills every single day with defensive line coaches. Don't move till the football moves. When the ball moves, you move. Peripheral vision, watch that football, tune the quarterback out. Give up a first down and two penalties. No, nope, not good enough. There were a lot of flags in the first half against both schools. Clark and Lockett go to the top. First and ten from the 30. Here's Scobie. And he'll get maybe a yard. He's dropped by Dabdu and a couple other Buffaloes. We update the scouting report on K-State. That still equates to 10 penalties for over 100 yards. That's not good enough. Score first, didn't get that done. Executing the red zone, no opportunity. So, you know, that's a that's a push at this point, but still too many penalties. And they didn't get off and score first and get their crowd into it. Colorado quieted this Kansas State crowd a little bit. So that's why Kansas State's on the short end of things right now. Scobie's out of there. Rock Cartwright, the lone setback. And here's Roberson looking to run. And Colorado closes that down in a hurry. Marcus Harris. You know, he lines up as a defensive end, number 30. 
but he's 6'2 and about 220 pounds, not your typical DN. No, in terms of body type, but boy, he is athletic. He gets his pad level down, and he, when he gets off of blocks, he's got closing speed. He can, you know how you talked about defensive backs closing on a football when wide receivers are running routes. He closes on ball carriers and quarterbacks when he separates. He actually came to Colorado as a defensive back. Now he's at a three-point. Third down, Roberson, and it is broken up underneath. A good play by Roderick Sneed, and three and out. Well, for K-State, Roberson continues to underthrow the football. He had receivers open in the first half and underthrew them regularly. Some of the tip long balls turned into interception. And here's the kick. Watch up. Watch Clark at the top here. He's open. He's in the seam. Ball underthrown. Just a little bit underthrown. A little bit more under, air underneath the football. Trying to put everything on too much of a tight rope. Travis Brown will punt it to Roman Hollowell, averaging almost 18 yards a return. Good uh -oh. snap, but he dropped uh -oh. the football. He's in trouble. There's the mistake. There's a mistake in the kicking game. He's dropped at the 20-yard line. Now, Drew, in the first half, Colorado ran a fake punt. Unsuccessfully, their defense rose to the occasion and took the football away by turnover. Now Kansas State. His defense has their backs to the wall because not a fake, a mishandled snap, perfect snap, dropped the ball. Absolutely dropped the football. No other way to put it. Now he's running for his life. He's Ben Gazzara, and he's in trouble. With a 7-0 lead, Colorado has a golden opportunity here to go up two scores. Now it's up to the Kansas State defense to respond like Colorado's did when they had to. Colorado has been terrific in the third this year. They'll spot it at the 22. Chris Brown trying to get wide. And he works his way to the 16-yard line. Lieber and Terrence Newman bring him down. And again, that's a snap that has to be handled. But Jared Bright is normally the number one punter. Well, let's talk about red zone. Kansas State, defensively, people have been in the red zone eight times against them. This is the ninth time in the red zone. They have not given up a touchdown yet. That's their mantra. Can't give up a touchdown. Going to limit this to nothing more than a field goal opportunity. Here's Brown, gets a good lead block, and then takes a big shot right at the 14-yard line. He got a nice block from Quinn Sipniewski. Boy, and then Terry hit. Pierce. I mean, he's hitting everything that moves 56. Well, he was challenged by his defensive coordinator, Phil Bennett. Phil Bennett said, hey, we haven't seen what Colorado does this year yet. We've seen a lot of funky offense. We haven't seen two backs in the tight end of the box, a full back in the tight end. You're going to have to come downhill, son, and hit people. And he has responded to that challenge. He was a Big 12 defensive freshman of the year last year. Third and three. Brown, he's not going to get there. Oh. Nope, Kansas State rose up. Colorado, I imagine, they're going to be two yards short. I imagine they got, they got to kick three here, Dave. Uh, you got to get the points. You got to go two scores up the way your defense is playing, especially. Colorado's defense showing no signs of cracking. If you can get two scores up on Kansas State, you're in good shape. And Phil Bennett applauds his defensive players' effort right there, limiting this to nothing but a field goal opportunity. It'll be from 31 yards, Jeremy Flores. Flores does his job, and Colorado extends their lead to 10 to nothing. Still no touchdowns relinquished in the red zone, however, by K-State. to nothing Kansas State trailing and Travis Brown right now has the long face he dropped the snap Jared Bright not available he has a bad leg here's Newman and he's dumped at the 26 yard line Walrus down on the coverage unit and here's the the drop snap Travis Brown perfect snap just took his eyes off it I guess a little bit and as a result, paid dearly as he gets corralled by three Colorado Buffaloes, giving his defense a short field to defend, and they rise to the occasion, limiting it to a field goal opportunity for Colorado. That's ten, nine possessions by the opposition in the red zone. 
have not allowed a touchdown yet. On the flip side of it, though, the offense has been in the red zone nine times, and they haven't scored a touchdown for Kansas State as well. Here's the option, and again, Roberson can find no room. A flag is down, thrown by well, the linesman. Either Colorado lined up off sides, or Kansas State did not have seven at the line of scrimmage, because I did not see anybody jumping. So it's either an alignment problem, not seven on the line, or... And it looks like it's going to be an illegal procedure against Kansas State. They must not have had seven people at the line of scrimmage. I didn't see anybody jumping. Must have been the way he looked like he may have called a false start. Illegal formation nope, on the offense. Not on enough line. players on the line of scrimmage. Penalty is declined. Brings up second down. There's the sixth penalty of the game against Kansas State. Coming in, they had been penalized well over 300 yards in three games. Colorado, 54 and two, and they're up by more than nine. They lead 10 to nothing here. Early stages, quarter number three. Roberson on option pass. Backside throw, and it's incomplete. Sneed had the coverage on Brandon Clark. You can see he's got a big arm. L. Roberson threw a frozen rope about 45 yards. Uh, but Colorado is just playing so well defensively. I mean, Roberson looks like he has a lot of opportunity to run the football, decides to get it down the football field all the way back across the field. Not only in the air for all those yards, Drew, but he threw it from left hash mark to right sideline. That's a long way, and to get it there as rapidly as he did, no question about his arm strength. Third and 10. K-State needs the 36. No flag, McChesney got back. Roberson throwing. Oh. Warren, did he hold on? Oh, no. no, he lost the football. Nick Warren had it, and he He's took hurt. a belt. He's hurt, too. He, he took a shot right from the, Roderick Sneed. Right in the solar plexus, right under the shoulder pads in the chest area. That's the second big hit Sneed has laid today, the junior from Mesquite, Texas. I tell you, I, I, I hope it's just trying to get his win. I hope it's nothing more than that. But he was exposed. He's a big, long target, 6'7", 255 pounds. And, and, and you, wanna, you want your son to play tight end? Listen to this. That's a lick right there. That's contact. And, and really, it's, it's no shame on his part to not be able to control that football because with that kind of contact, to hold on to the football would have been truly miraculous. And you know what? He's banged up. He was still trying to catch it after the hit. Yeah, he was. That was a good, good reaction, good instincts, Drew. Nick Warren's uh, another former walk-on. Walk Everybody talks about the Nebraska walk-on program, and it is tops in the country, but Kansas State has done a very good job with their walk-on program. Roberson delivers a very accurate football, and, and Warren's trying to make the play, but, boy, that's just a, just a tremendous hit. And good news, he's up and jogging off the field. I think he had the wind knocked out of him because he got hit right in the solar plate, right, you know, right underneath your... Your sternum, where the solar plexus is, and, and you get the all the air goes out of you, and you think you're never going to get another breath. And he got his back and got off the football field. Yeah, that's a lovely feeling, isn't it? Oh, it's no, there's no worse feeling in the world. Bright is in the punt, not Brown. Wow, nice one. Hollowell. Hollowell ducks down at the plus 45. Actually, that was Mike Ronsick, the third punter. Punt of 47, return of 28. Big 12 football is brought to you by Sonic Drive-Ins and your friends at Dr. Pepper. And by Sitco. Your neighborhood Sitco is proud to support today's athlete. Sitco, we know you. Glorious day in Manhattan, Kansas. Right now, the Wildcats don't think it's so glorious. They're down 10 to nothing, and Colorado has it first and 10 from the Wildcat 44. Play action pass. Oaks will throw it in the flat to drum. And like all good fullbacks, he wants contact. Then he finds it. He gets about three yards on that pass play. You know, in this game, Colorado's averaged five and a half yards on first down. 
K-State just two and a half. And that's exactly what part of their game plan was. They wanted to dominate on first down or win on first down, and they've done that. They were averaging 6.6 .6 yards per game on first down uh, coming in, and close to that still. Brown and Drum in the backfield. Here's Chris Brown. Milton Proctor gets the tackle. Brown got five or six. It'll be third and a couple. Let's take a look at Colorado's game plan, how well they did. Win the running game. They did that. They ran the football for over 100 yards and, and kept Kansas State to a little over 50. Big on first down. 5.2, as you mentioned, Drew, only giving up a little over two. Turnovers, they were plus one in that area. That's why they're up 7-0. They executed their game plan to 10-0. Uh, they executed their game plan to perfection. Third and a couple. Brown. Looks like he has the first down. He will. They'll move the chains again for Colorado. Tank Reese will get a blast for the Wildcats. One of the things that Colorado felt they had to do, and most coaches believe this going in every week, is win on special teams. And they got a winning play a moment ago from Roman Hollowell. Yeah, they did get a, a, a nice big punt return by Hollowell. And coming into the football game, Hollowell was fifth in the country, averaging almost 18 yards per punt return. He gave Colorado a tremendous field position with a great effort earlier. Here's a waggle. Oaks has the big tight end, Graham. And the touchdown maker out of bounds at the nine-yard line. Just his second catch of the game. He comes up limping. A little bit of a hitch in the get-along there, but boy, what a big play. And, and the Kansas State coaching staff very, very concerned about his elusiveness, his ability to, to escape the line of scrimmage, runs a shallow cross and just beats the linebackers in, in, in front of the secondary and away from the linebackers as he landed, kind of landed hard on that right knee, but big play by Graham again. McCoy left, Cormier right. McCoy in motion. Brown. And he gets maybe a yard. It is tough to run against Kansas State. Sounds repetitive, but we've been saying it for about a half a dozen years. Henry Bryant that time, number 90. Once again, a red zone opportunity for the Buffaloes. Will they be the first team to score a touchdown against this Kansas State defensive unit inside the 20-yard line? They find themselves inside the 10-yard line. Kansas State, nine penetrations by the opposition. No touchdowns allowed. This is number 10. in trouble. No and way, he throws play. it over Brunson's head in the back of the end zone. Good play. That was a near disaster for Colorado. Well, against Fresno State in the opener, he could have uh, thrown the football away and, and, and his team settled for a field goal to win the game. Tried to force a play into double coverage in the red zone. Fresno State picked it off. Lose the football game by two points. Here he avoids Lieber, showing the elusiveness and his capability. Now he says, I'm not going to take a red zone sack or throw a red zone interception. I'm throwing it away and reloading. He's outside of the tackle box. He can do exactly that, throw it away. Heads up play. He learned by a mistake, and that's all you can ask. Johnson in the slot. Now he comes in motion. Third and goal. They'll run with Brown. And he'll get to the two. Good short tackle by John McGraw in the secondary. If he doesn't make that tackle, it's a touchdown. You're exactly right, because Brown had that pad level down. He had a great body lean going. And that kid is a thumper, boy. He will bruise you between the tackles. He does a good job of breaking a tackle at the line of scrimmage, but cannot quite run through McGraw's tackle. Another field goal opportunity for Colorado. Jeremy Flores with a glorified extra point attempt. And it is 13 to nothing, Colorado. So they take advantage of the nice punt return by Roman Hollowell. 6.59 to go in the third. Colorado leading 13 to nothing. No more interested observer than that man, Jay Sean Sykes, who again learned yesterday that he has a herniated disc in his neck, could be facing surgery, could be out for the year. 
But of course today he's got a bit of a smile right now because his team leads 13 to nothing as Pat Brom will kick it deep. And I'll tell you his replacement Joey Johnson is passing his first test with flying colors. And that goes out of bounds. So Kansas State will take it at the 35 yard line. They're trying to do everything they can to avoid Aaron Lockett. Yep. And it'll cost them some yardage. How about Daniel Graham? Well this touchdown reception was spectacular adjustment to the football tipping the ball to himself with his right hand this is the most recent play setting his team up for the short field goal shallow cross getting behind the linebackers in front of the secondary and making a, a, a big game his yards per catch have been phenomenal today and coming into today's action had more catches for more yards than any tight end in the country you, you know what? I know his dad but well, and so do you. And, and Tom right now is on a couch, and nobody's sitting within 10 yards of him because he's jumping up and down. <laughs> 22 yards per catch today with a touchdown. I'll tell you what, he's one of our players to watch. And Ben Lieber having a solid game as well with four tackles on the day defensively. Here's Morris on the pitch. And he'll get maybe a yard or two. Danny Morris in for Josh Scobie at the tailback, a sophomore from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. He has 54 yards rushing this year. Scobie's their guy. Unless he's just getting a breather, you wonder why he's not in there. Colorado's averaging over six yards now per, per gain on first down. And uh, Kansas State averaging under three. So first down has been a big, big down for the Buffaloes. This is a very important drive, obviously, for Kansas State. They got to get something going. Roberson all day goes backside, and Lockett is locked up by Donald Strickland. Drew, you know what's impressive to me? Colorado shut down Kansas State's option today to this point. And in practice, it's hard to simulate L. Roberson running the option and making the decisions that he make in the game and, and at game speed. And they have been phenomenal taking him out of the option, taking his pitch man out of the option. They have played their defensive responsibilities perfectly. And I'll tell you what, Vince Okruk has done a, has done a heck of a job. Roberson shakes off the hit. Now he's in a world of hurt. He's dropped at the 18-yard line. It is Matt McChesney, the sophomore from Longmont, Colorado, and K-State's going the wrong direction. Colorado is winning the competition at the line of scrimmage on both sides of the football. And when you win the competition at the line of scrimmage, usually you win the contest. And, and really breaking clean on a stunt. Initial hit by, uh, by the linebacker, Johnson. Sykes' replacement, Johnson gets the initial hit. And McChesney finishes it up. Mike Ronsick will punt it again, and that nearly went over his head. Fair catch called. Oh, that might have hit. Yes, it did. It. It. That hit a Colorado player. It's K-State football. At the midfield, right at the 50-yard line. You're exactly right, Drew. You can't advance it, but you do have the football. So another critical kicking game mistake. Kansas State made one when they could not handle a snap on a punt. Colorado made one fake punt that didn't work. This is the second one. The defense bailed him out the first time. Let's see what happens. Right there, ball bounces right off of right off of the uh, the, the, the side, the, the ankle it looked like of is that Sorrell? That's Clyde Sorrell. It hit off of Sorrell and it's Kansas State's football. Can't advance it, but the ball is marked, where, and the officials are trying to figure out where it hits Sorrell. It bounced backwards to the 50-yard line, but it hits Sorrell at about the 46-yard line. Now, I think their discussion is where to mark the football. Once it hits Sorrell, it bounced backwards. Well, it, it should be where they recovered it, not where it hit Sorrell. It hits Sorrell at about the 40, 46-yard line. And then where and then they bounces recover back, it is... He picks it up at about, eh, about the 49. Right. They're off just a little bit of yard. Not bad. Great opportunity for K-State to get back in it. Uh, flags fly as Morris gets about five yards on first down. Well, you, know, you think about it, this could be an enormous play because if Kansas State can generate some offense as it's offside on Colorado, they make maybe a 13-7 game. Colorado was looking at a short field with a 13-0 lead. Absolutely, a huge swing. Five-yard penalty, remains first down. That's why, Drew, anytime you're in a defensive battle, field position becomes huge. And dictating field position is, is, your, is your biggest objective. And avoiding the mistake and making the big play in the kicking game. 
This is the second mistake Colorado has had in the kicking game technically. Fake punt, unsuccessful. Defense bails them out. This time, see what the defense does. A lot of penalties both ways today. Roberson on the option, gets it to Morris with a blocker. And Morris still going. Inside the 20 to 16 yard line, easily the best play for Kansas State since early in the football game. And Justin Bannon for Colorado is down at midfield. And that would be a huge loss. Justin Bannon at midfield, their big defensive lineman still prone on his front side, rolling over to his backside now and, and struggling. Joe Hall, the big fullback, made a huge block. Huge block that got Morris going on the sideline. Watch the big fullback. Watch Hall. Hall comes on the edge. Contact, sustained. Drive, 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 kick out. And then Morris shows the speed, breaks the tackle, tight ropes the sideline, cuts it back inside. First time the option has broken, as you described, Drew, and it broke to the perimeter pretty effectively. But Bannon, the big concern for the Colorado defense right now, he has been a huge force inside all day long. Yeah, he's been a horse. And he's up. And the first thing you worry about are the legs. The legs look okay. As, as a lineman, Dave, you played 10 years in the National Football League. You know your fingers aren't always going to go the right direction, so you hope it's an upper extremity. That's right. Yeah, anything on the arms or hands, you play. You know, but your legs, if it limits your ability to move and, and be effective, you get in trouble. But Bannon's a tough customer. I think he'll put some bailing wire on, a little tape, and he'll probably come back in this football game. There's no way he wants to watch the rest of it from the sideline after contributing as much as he has to this point. Gary Barnett talked about turning the toughness factor around when he took over at Colorado. And he has. Ban Bannon, he has, and Bannon's one of the leaders in the tough guy group. He talked about on his date of hire, return to dominance, RTD. Roberson, he won't get much. The Colorado Ball defensive here. line has been Ball stout Roberson. all afternoon. Sean Tufts around the football. Also Brandon Dabdu, a guy that looked at film uh, that super freshman Harris at Oklahoma last week and he said boy that guy's only a freshman maybe I can play and now now the flip side of the red zone Second do remember nine. this is Kansas State's first opportunity in the red zone today offensively this is their 10th time in the red zone they haven't scored a touchdown on their first nine opportunities let's see what happens in this one have to score now to make it a one score game touchdown not field goal Hall and Morris the backfield here's Morris Wow, somebody's blew a tire again. Yeah, that's about the eighth time we've seen a shoot come off Man, today. Right there. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's, it's happened with regularity. Getting that thing back on. It's the big center. Yep, it's the big, the big center for, for Kansas State. And that's Steve Washington. Derek Evans comes in, a wide out. Third Nick down, Warren third goes third out. Down. So on third down and about six and a half, remember, they'll spread the field. Remember I talked about E.B., his versatility. E.B. is now playing left tackle. E.B.'s gone from center to left tackle in this series. They need the six-yard line. Morris will be four yards short. Big decision. Do you put points on the board? Or do you go for a first down and continue in the red zone to try to score a touchdown? If you settle for a field goal, you're two, still two scores down, but it looks like that's what's going to happen. Now, now Colorado has to be alert for the fake. Have to make sure that they take care of all responsibilities on their field goal block team in case Kansas State decides to pull a little trickery here. I think Bill Snyder, though, will try to get points on the board. There's only two and a half minutes to go. Uh, there's still a whole quarter, two and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. No reason to panic. Kyle Altfader, 27 yards away. He's got to hook it. Oh, did he hook it too hold much? Hold it. Hold it. He did. Yep. K-State, after the great run by Morris, nothing to show for it. The score remains 13-zip, Colorado. We apologize, we missed one snap, a one yard or two yard gain for Portland Johnson. Oaks in trouble, has got to unload early. And he gets knocked down coming off the edge. It was 94, Thomas Hochin. 
So it'll be third down and eight. And you think about the special teams at K-State. They've been so dominant on both sides of the ball. And special teams, they have Martin Gramatica, a Pro Bowl kicker in the NFL now. Jamie Ream, who is a great kicker. And now all of a sudden, that part of their game is not as sound. And it's affected them today, Dave. Oh, it has. But, but the first thing they have to do when they get in the red zone is score a touchdown. They haven't done that all year long. But when you do settle for field goal opportunities, it's not automatic, like automatic or dramatic like it used to be. Third and eight. Oaks has done this a few uh -oh. times today. Oaks is gonna get above the 40 to the 45 yard line. His third big scramble of the afternoon. Well, in the first half, Drew, he pulled it down and, and, run, and ran two times for 44 yards. 22 yards a pop, and he did it again. And what you do is you lose your, if you lose your pass rush lane, you lose your contain on Oates, he'll hurt you. He runs 4-6, plenty fast enough. And he's got a lot of strength and size in that body. So when he scrambles, he scrambles with good enough speed and quite a bit of power. First and 10 from the 45. Chris Brown. And he gets three or four. Chris Brown is a transfer from Fort Scott Junior College. He began his career at Northwestern where Barnett had recruited him, never played there. And then when he left, he thought about quitting football, Dave. That's amazing. He made a good decision. Yeah, he, doing that. he made a real good Staying decision. With the game. And after playing at Fort Scott, he's come to Colorado. And he's got three years to play three. So he's just a sophomore. And I'll tell you, Drew, Eric Bieniemy, the running back coach, played in the NFL for a lot of years with the San Diego Chargers, Cincinnati Bengals. He's doing a masterful job of uh, keeping all these guys involved. Well, you know EB is going to be intense. Yep. Brown, 83 yards prior to that carry. And he breaks it to the 39. How did he do that? Can't arm tackle this guy. He is a bruising, punishing running back. He blew a tire. He's got to put some rubber back on. Man, it's just, I don't know if it's the, it's the AstroTurf here or a lot of arm tackling going on, and they're ripping off the shoes, but people are running right out of their shoes for more yards. This is astonishing. K-State, I'm looking at the scoreboard. 20 seconds left in the third quarter. They don't have a point. One of the most prolific offenses in college football. They hung 37 last week on Oklahoma. Hey. And they're going to finish three quarters at home. Shut out. Being shut out. And I'll tell you what, Big 12 take note. Colorado is back to their physical, pounding, defensive-oriented running game style of football. That's what won them a national championship back in 1990. As if the Big 12 wasn't deep enough. Yeah. Through three chapters in Manhattan, Kansas. A bit of a shocker. It's Colorado 13, K-State nothing. Oaks with Colorado leading 13 to nothing, and this one's blown dead. A little bit of a false start. A little bit of a false start right there, early start for Colorado. Backfield. That's a five-yard penalty. Remains first down. Please put the game clock back to 15. You know what's been amazing about this football game? Colorado has dominated on the line of scrimmage, and you go to the play a few moments ago where Kansas State not only doesn't score a touchdown, but they missed a field goal. That deflates him, and now the physical nature of the game is starting to wear down the Wildcats. And, and remember, Colorado's got four running backs they can rotate in there. Offensive line doing the job at the line of scrimmage. They still have fresh legs at the running back position. They're starting to pound on a Kansas State defensive football team that has been on the field quite a bit. We'll see if I if they wear him down totally here in the fourth quarter. The blocker is number 22, Chris Brown. Brown gets it to the 34-yard line, and he is now over 100 yards in the football game for the third time this year. Boy, you know, Cortland Johnson's rushed for 100 yards eight times. Marcus Houston's done it twice. Sidney Browns is the second or third time Drew, 100-yard guy. Purify has got a 100-yard game. They've got multiple weapons in that backfield. Well, Marcus Houston has just uh, one carry today. Brown gets spilled on second and five after maybe a yard. It was Deron Tyler involved in the tackle. As we take a look at our Comfort In game summary, Colorado 
Almost oh. a two to one advantage now in total offense. Yeah, they're big on first down. Oaks has been efficient. Five for five on first down. He's got three scrambles for over 60 yards. And right there, holding Roberson in check. 70 total yards. Remember last week he had 372 total yards against Oklahoma. And then the kicking game. Missed field goals. Problems in the kicking game. For Kansas State. Third and four. And Brown's going to be stopped shy by about a yard. And I would not at all be surprised if Gary Barnett lines it up. Though he does have the wind at his back and could go up by an additional score. If he elects to kick the field goal, it'll be about a 48-yarder. But I wouldn't be surprised if he lines up and tries to He's get the first about down. It. He is yeah. going to think about it. You know what? If they kick the field goal, Drew, it's still a two-score game. Touchdowns and two-point conversions. Good point. We're back in a moment. Colorado leading 13 to nothing. They're looking at a fourth and a good yard. And they're going to go. They're not going to bring out Jeremy Flores. That's confidence in your defense. If it doesn't work out, you have to understand your defense can bail you out. I'm sure they'll run behind Garad and Rodgers. They do. And I don't think he got there. I don't penetrations, Tank Reese. It's going to be close, but I think he's a scope short. Tank Reese, five foot nine, 280 pounds, and he moved along the ground and tripped up Brown. You can't get under Tank. No. The only way to get under his shoulder pads is come off the line of scrimmage on your hands and knees. I don't think you need to measure here. And now they're respotting it, and it's a little more favorable for Colorado, but I don't think he got close. Talk about Tank. He's a mini fridge. You know, he's one of those uh, mini bar fridges, you know, and, and it's Kansas State football. So you have to understand that if you don't get this done up front offensively, your defense that's been playing well all day long has to continue. And the penetration, there's Tank. And that's a mobile tank. I mean, Tank got in there and made the hit, and the helmet came flying off. But that, that's, you know, a, that's a tank that moves laterally, too. Yeah, I mean, that's a tank that's got four-wheel drive. You know, and, 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 and it's got rack and pinion steering. It can shift gears. I mean, that's a that's a custom-built tank right there. Yeah, it's got leather seating. Yeah, it's got a sunroof. Uh-huh. Because the helmet came flying off. <laughs> Roberson to throw it. Toward Lockett, and it's nearly intercepted by Strickland. Should have been intercepted. Strickland, golden opportunity for him. Lost control of the football on the way to the turf. The ball underthrown again. All game long, Roberson has underthrown the football. Just not enough on it. Sometimes not enough air underneath it. And Strickland looked like the primary receiver. The receiver and defensive back, Lockett, had to change roles. He had to become the defensive back and do the best he could to break up the play. L. Roberson, just five of 19 for 62 yards. And that is incomplete. Close to interference on Strickland as Brandon Clark was the intended target. Now, now it's five of 20. And that ball floated on Roberson. That did not have the normal velocity, and Strickland timed his contact perfectly simultaneous with the arrival of the football floats a little bit and Strickland's there exactly when the football gets there in the official's position Roberson not that tight spiral floating on him a little bit wavering waffling Roberson uh, after the big game last week against Oklahoma struggling today the name of the game's consistency he's got to be a little more consistent third and ten Colorado drops seven and Roberson gets dropped at the 22 yard line Tyler Brayton Second sack on Roberson today. And it was just a straight rush. Four down linemen in your nickel. No blitzing, as you described, Drew. Drop seven into coverage. And when your four can beat their five for a quarterback sack, you got something cooking. Mike Ronsick. Mike Ronsick will punt. Colorado figures to get pretty good field position. He's got to punt it into the wind. And Hollowell around the 40 weight. And this is not a good punt off the side of his foot. Good roll. A little decent roll here. Picked up about another seven or eight yards. It'll roll dead and be down at the 45, a punt of 34 yards. Colorado very much in control at Wagner Field, leading 13 to nothing. We'll be back after a word from Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler.
Big 12 football is brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better. And by Southwestern Bell, the official telecommunications company of the Big 12. That's Anderson Hall in the background, the first building built here on the campus of K-State University. That's where Dr. John Leefall offices, the president of the university. And oh. nearly an interception right is picked off. Great hustle back to the football by Henry the Henry Bryant. Line. Yeah. Henry Bryant got the deflection. Lieber batted it around, and Bryant finished it off. So that takeaway, second interception from Craig Oates, gives Kansas State a short field again. You know, Colorado turned it over five times against Fresno and lost just twice the last three weeks. Today, that's their third. Excuse me, Lieber is on the pressure. The ball is deflected. Oh, that's Pierce. Pierce deflects it, bats it in the air. And then Bryant, the down lineman, hustling to the football, turn and run to the football, and he got a big return on that hustle investment with an interception. Cartwright and Scobie back in the eye. Roberson changing the play. If it's going to happen for K-State, it's got to happen here. 12.20 to go. Home run football to Clark. That's interference. Yeah, ran right up his back. But in college, you get just 15 yards. If it was the NFL, they'd go mark it at about the 12-yard line. Yeah, Donald Strickland, not trying to make a play on the football at all, runs right up the heels of Brandon Clark. You know, bump and run. How do you defeat the bump and run? Well, you swat, you swim, you do everything you possibly can, and he releases and just runs up the backside of his ankles. 15 yards. You know, Drew, Colorado has been a, a nemesis in Kansas State's side in terms of shutouts. Last time they were shut out in the road was 12-0 in, in Boulder in 96. Last time they were shut out ho at home back in 1991 by Colorado as well. And at this point in time, Kansas State being shut out to date. Well, Colorado got 11-0-1 until four years ago against K-State. But the Wildcats have won the last four. Scobie. It's patient, but he gets just a yard. Robbie Robinson drops him. Josh Scobie has not found many running lanes today. Just 24 yards on six carries. Well, here's a hustle play by Brian, a down lineman. Here he is. Watch him right here. Watch what happens. Pierce bats it around. Brian still hustling to the football. He's paid back for that effort. You never give up on a play. You separate from your block. You turn down the football field. You get a pursuit angle. As a result of him taking that pursuit angle, when Pierce bobbled it, he was there to receive it. Second and nine. Again, L. Roberson looks to change the play. Colorado blitzes off the edge. Scobie picks it up beautifully. Roberson toward the end zone and lock it out of the end zone. Roberson effortlessly that time threw the ball, let's say 53 yards in the air. He launched it from about his own 41, or from uh, Colorado's 41 yard line, threw it through the end zone. 10 yards in the end zone, 41 plus 10 is 51, and a couple yards out, 52, 53 yards easy, just like throwing a dart. Yeah, and into, the, to and into a pretty good breeze. Right. There's no question he has the arm strength. Now, he needs to work on the accuracy, the technique, the fundamentals, the footwork of, of throwing the ball short and intermediate on a, you know, in a tight area, accurately. Speaking of intermediate, that's what they need here. They need nine yards on third down. Colorado brings four. That's going to be picked oh, off. No the drop. Lewis might have had a touchdown if he held it. Yeah, he broke in front of Nick Warren. He's trying to go to his big tight end again. Six foot seven inch, 255 pound Nick Warren. L. Roberson said, boy, you look big down there to me. But Lewis said, I know where you're going, L. And he read his eyes and he broke on the football. Here's Lewis. Check him out. Number 31 in the white. He comes up, reads L's eyes, breaks on the football. Should have had his fourth interception of the year. Not quite come up with it. K-State forced to go for it, fourth and nine. Roberson in the half, Dave, 0 for 8. Wow. Blitz package coming, Roberson's got room. First down to the 18. Red zone again, another red zone opportunity, courtesy of L. Roberson's jackhammer feet. Both Oaks and Roberson are prototype college football quarterbacks of today. 
If it's not there for them to hurt you with their arm, they can get it done with their feet and legs. And right here, he sees a lane. He sees a lane distortion. And he says, I'm taking advantage of it. I know it's fourth down. I know where the chains are. I know I have to get inside the 20-yard line, and he did. Checking again at the line of scrimmage. Lockett and Lloyd to the near side. Scobie by himself. Here's a short side option. Boy, Colorado has really put some helmets on Kansas State today. Bannon helping out from a D-tackle spot, but again, it was Strickland and also Roderick Sneed. And, and Sneed got there courtesy of a missed block by Brandon Clark. Brandon Clark, that gets his block on Sneed. It might get some yards, but Sneed comes up and runs support, and then Bannon, inside-out pursuit, gets involved. That's Oprah, the defensive coordinator for Colorado, said he was concerned about weak side option against K-State. Yeah, they've, uh, they've stepped up for sure. Roberson in trouble, and he's knocked down. And Walrus. Drew Walrus made him throw early. Nice pressure. A nice adjustment. You know, I mean, he showed some athletic ability because Roberson's pump faking him and Walrus stayed with it. Here's a guy that's valuable as well. You know, I talked about Evie playing center guard and tackle. Walrus can play all three of the linebacker spots. Middle, strong side, and weak side. That is a valuable commodity. Particularly, you know, when you have injuries, you can put a player in, you plug him in any one of those spots to get an experienced guy. 0 for 9 now for Roberson. Third down and 8. They need the 7 yard line. Blitz coming off the corner. The screen set up. Good call. Ooh, it'll be a first down at the 6. Ricky Lloyd. You know, they, they had the right call on there. They did. They, you know, they figured that Colorado would come after him. And Ron Hudson, offensive coordinator, coming with the, the alley screen to his wide receiver. He does a night. Lloyd does a good job of securing it, and Warren makes a nice block for him. They'd almost be better off if this were fourth down and just six inches short, because if they ran a play and picked up about three or four yards, it'd be first and goal about the five instead of the seven. But it is a first down, and not going to uh, quibble about it. Take that first and goal, and this looks like their best opportunity to bust that red zone jinx. I mean, the red zone has been the twilight zone for Kansas State offensively. This is their 11th journey, and they haven't scored a touchdown in the red zone yet. Here's the drive after the interception. Joe Hall is coming to the game. They'll go with the power eye, full house backfield. Here's Hall. You know what? That's about two tons of people right there. I'll tell you what, when Joe Hall, number 33, is in the full house, it's a multi-family unit dwelling. I mean, that's not just a full house. That's, that's a full apartment building. It's a neighborhood. This, yeah, this guy's over 300 pounds. And look at look at the agility and the feet. And, and one guy's not going to take him down. It's going to take about three or four. And still then, he's not going to go down easily. Because he's got a foundation now. Can't knock him off his pits very easily. Here's Scobie. He'll get inside the three. Tyler Brayton again involved. He's played an enormous football game. I mean, you got to think ahead right now. This is four down territory. Cannot settle for a field goal here with less than nine minutes to play. I mean, my mindset would be, if I don't get it done on third down, I'm going to have to run my best short yardage goal line play on fourth down and make it a one score game. Clark's got single coverage down low. Option with Roberson. Touchdown, Kansas State. Fourth down's a moot point. Roberson executes the option for perfection. And they're right back in it. They hit the extra point. They're down only six. As much as they've been dominated today, with 8.30 to go, they're an extra point away from being down just six. And that's a credit to their defensive football team. They've bent but not broken, and turnovers have been costly for Colorado, particularly that one. Jared Bright. Lock. That's no good. Hit the upright. Hit the upright. Yeah. Looked like somebody got a hand on it, but he got through there and hit that left upright square. Still a one-score yeah, game. Yeah, it's, it's still a one-score game, so it's not an absolute disaster for Kansas State. 
A team that's really struggled uncharacteristically on special teams. That's their fifth missed extra point in the last three weeks. Hustled by Bryant, gave him the opportunity. Thirteen to six now. Kansas State finally on the board after being shut out for three and a half quarters. Jared Bright will kick it off. Again, he'll kick it into the wind. Hollowell and Roderick Sneed are deep. This is almost a mortar kick. Bearcats called and executed at the 33 by Quinn Sipniewski, a backup tight end. Well, the fifth missed extra point by Kansas State was deflected right here. Penetration hits it with the left hand as a result of the deflection. This is a backup center. And if it gets penetration, kick, hits it with the left hand, reroutes it off the left upright. Penetration up the middle between the center and guard in that center guard gap. Could be a big play. We'll see how this unfolds. Now Colorado would like to move the football a little bit. Drummond Brown. And Brown tackled in the backfield. Guess who? Ben Lieber. And emotion, Dave, as you know, such a big part of this game. And Kansas State was down for a while. And now they have something to get excited about because they realize they can win this thing. No question about it. Mo emotion equals momentum. And Colorado has had the momentum for the biggest part of this football game. But now Kansas State has got some momentum. Ten play drive for the Wildcats. 46 yards is all that was generated, but a multiple play drive. K-State showing blitz. And Brown will get a couple to the 35, protecting the football. Right, they're trying to rip it out of there. Henry Bryant, number 90, got a piece of the tackle again. He's been very good today, former junior college All-American from Garden City. He had the interception that gave his offense a short field when they went 10 plays for the touchdown. Pierce batted the ball around, a pass by Oaks. Pierce got his hands on it, knocked it around, and Bryant hustling. Instead of the ball hitting the turf, it fell in Bryant's hands. He gave his football team, half offensive team, a half field to negotiate. Big third down right here. Oaks has thrown it just 16 times today, eight completions. They need the 43. Oaks looking to run, won't get far. Dropped at the 37, Justin Montgomery pursued him. And Colorado goes three and out. Well, every time Oaks scrambled with the football, it was good for 20 yards until that one. Mariscal will punt it. Maybe the best return man in college football back at the 20 and Aaron Lockett. An All-American a year ago as a punt returner. Now does Kansas State come after it, or do they fall back into a return for Lockett? They got the return set up. No, oh, he fumbled all... the snap. He fumbled the snap, and somehow he got it away. Lockett by himself at the 30, trying to reroute. Flags flying everywhere. Illegal that, blocks. you got to figure illegal yeah, blocks. That's probably going to cost Kansas State a few yards on the return. A punt of 35. What a strange-looking oh. punt that was because uh, Mariscal almost dropped the snap, and I thought it was going to be blocked. It was a perfect snap again. Both punters having problems. I don't know if there's rosin on these new footballs or what, but right through Mariscal's hands, and at that point, he loses his protection as a punter. And he's a running back, you know, bobbling the ball around like that, and he got the kick away. I'm surprised that, that Colorado... No flag on the play. No flag on the play. Pick the flag up. No illegal block, I guess. I'm surprised Colorado wasn't downfield illegally because the timing of that thing was disruptive. He catches it, then he, he starts to bobble it as he attempts his draw. Yeah, that was weird because he, he did catch it Chad clean. caught it, and then as he's going through his drop, he loses control of the football, dropping it from his hand to his foot to kick it. You never know in this game. You just never know. So with 5.59 left, Colorado up seven. K-State from their own 31. 
Roberson oh. in trouble, and he's dropped at the 20-yard line. It's Brayton again. He got the inside on Benarshan, the big right tackle. Braden took the inside rush on him and closed on Roberson and made a sure tackle because Roberson's got that elusiveness. Check him out. Takes an inside rush. Gets him upfield, then pulls it up, arm under underneath, trying to hold <laughs> and can't quite get it done. Benarshan's trying to grab him, knows he's in trouble. Sack. Roberson, he's got a screen set up. Scoby blown up by Johnson. How about, how about Mr. Johnson stepping up and making plays? Joey Johnson playing in place of Jay Sean Sykes makes another play. Now it's third and a ton. Third and a whole bunch. Third and over 20, or about 20. And that's not where you want to be against this Colorado defense that has been ultra aggressive all day long. You know, you, you look at Sykes, you look at Minardi, the best receiver in the group. You lose two seniors like that, that's a tough thing to overcome, but everybody else is stepping up. If everybody does a little, nobody has to do a lot in their stead. Colorado has played well. I'm out by Bannon. Justin Bannon didn't like what he saw. Kansas State needs the 41-yard line. It is third and 21 with 434 to play. A reminder, next week we'll be in Stillwater, Oklahoma. We'll see fifth-ranked Texas led by Chris Sims as they take on the Cowboys. We're led by running back Tatum Bell. This kid can really go. That's Oklahoma State and Texas, 12.30 in the east next Saturday, 9.30 out west. Check your local listings. Bill Snyder in the middle of that pack. And if you're Bill Snyder, the likelihood of picking up 21 yards here is not good. So uh, he might be thinking about uh, what they can do to get it back as they did a moment ago on a pick. Yeah, Pierce tipping it, Bryant with hustle, and then Roberson executes the option for a touchdown. But, you know, defensive linemen, they're taught to never give up on a play. Once the ball's down the field, separate from your block and, and take a beeline pursuit angle to get involved. And Bryant fulfilled his obligation, got down the football field, and he, and he got what every defensive lineman wants, an interception off a tip ball. Colorado brings five on third down. Roberson's in trouble, and he's dropped. At the 19-yard line, fourth sack of the game. This one goes to Marcus Harris. I'll tell you, Harris on one ed edge, McChesney on the other. They did a good job. Colorado felt they could they could do some damage to Kansas State's offensive tackles, who are not that experienced and who are playing injured. They lost Kansas State lost their best offensive tackle. Harris injured after the play, limping off the field. Kansas State lost their best offensive tackle, Barnett to injury. And they've been scrambling ever since. And they've been struggling at the tackle spot. And Colorado has really on straight rushes, not even having the blitz, has been beating Kansas State on the edge at that tackle position fairly frequently. And Harris has got a real problem with that, that right foot a little bit. Walking it off. So Ronsick, Dave will be backed up inside his own five yard line to punt it into the wind and Roman Hollowell should gather it in close to midfield. Ooh, hit it good. He hit it good. Hollowell from his 41. Wow. Look out. Wow. Hollowell won the beat. Look at him. Inside the 10 yard line to the six, Roman Hollowell has done it again. No flags. Well, the team that avoids the big mistake and makes the big play in the kicking game gets a leg up in a defensive battle. And Hollowell just made the big play. Both teams have made kicking game mistakes. Hollowell has made the biggest play in the kicking game to date. And he is just quick, low center of gravity. Cartwright trying to grab him, stumble, makes him stumble a little bit, and ultimately Proctor knocks him out of bounds. 
but not until he had chewed up half the football field on that return. Huge play. 54 yards on the return by Roman Hollowell, who averages 17-9 coming in among the top punt returners in the nation. Colorado trying to throw the knockout punch here. Brown, maybe a yard. But Colorado all afternoon has run, run, run. Well, in this situation, Drew, you know, conservatism isn't necessarily all bad because if you kick the field goal and go up 10, you have a two-score lead with less than three and a half minutes to play. You don't want to turn it over in the red zone. Ball security in the huddle. Oaks is saying two arms on the football, running backs, and I'm not going to throw any interceptions. Let's try to score, but if we don't, we've got a, a place kicker that's executed for us. If he does it again, we have a two-score lead. Drum and Brown, two tight ends. And here comes Brown again. Inside the five to maybe the four and a half. Justin Montgomery, 92, will get up last. And that's exactly what Gary Barnett's thinking, Dave. That uh, we need the three points to get a 10-point separation. And Kansas State will call timeout. They'll have two left. And while both teams head to the sideline, We'll take a look at our Sitco We Know You. I'm a Kansas State. I am Kansas State's all-time leader in total offense. It was chosen first team quarterback on the all-time Big 8 football team. And after college, I played 15 years in the NFL, throwing for more than 23,000 yards. And, and I, flew, I flew with him from Chicago to Kansas City uh, to this football so, game. Right. right, so all the people who are on that flight yeah, should no, exactly. know the answer. Exactly, and one of the nicest guys you're ever going to want to meet. Hey, He's a good man. He was a heck of a quarterback also. Yes, he was. So think about that for a couple of more moments. And uh, we'll give you the answer. Last time Kansas State lost two straight in the regular season back in 1994. Now that's in the regular season. They lost two straight games in 98. They lost the Big 12 championship to Texas A&M and then lost the Alamo Bowl to Purdue. But we're talking regular season, which this is. This is not postseason. You got to go back a ways. Well, they've been remarkable. They've been among the top five teams in the country over the last five years. They've had 58 straight home wins against unranked opponents, and Colorado's still unranked on the cusp of being ranked, but 58 straight unranked at home. Third and goal, Brown. We'll get it to the three, and Gary Barnett will trot Jeremy Flores out to the field. Kansas State obviously has to think about their best block opportunity. Whatever alignment and stunt they can run to get pressure to block this field goal. And the answer to our Sitco We Know You question Mr. is Lynn Dickey. Mr. Lynn Dickey, great guy. And he played a lot of years in the National Football League with the Houston Oilers and Green Bay Packers and, and played and very effectively. And he said his favorite teammate of all time is a colleague of ours. Yeah, James Lofton, who was a tremendous receiver for the Green Bay Packers, then of course finished his career with the Buffalo Bills, was the number one draft pick of the Packers out of Stanford. And Lynn Dickey said everything for James Lofton was so easy because he's so smart, Stanford graduate, so much ability, you know, a track star. And, he said he just loved throwing to James Lofton because he knew it was going to be a big be a big play when he let the ball go. James will be in Lincoln tonight for Nebraska and Iowa State. Here's Flores from 21 yards away. He's got it through and Colorado has a 10 point lead with 237 to play in Manhattan, Kansas. Sixteen to six Colorado leading number 12 Kansas State in Manhattan. They have lost 11 times at Wagner Field at home since Bill Snyder took over 13 years ago. It just doesn't happen. It, it definitely doesn't. The last time they were 0-2 in the conference to start conference play was 1992. They could start if this game ends up with this score, 0-2 in conference play. You have to go back darn near a decade to find that happening. Pat Rome into the football and that goes out of bounds. That's not what Gary Barnett was looking for there. So 
Kansas State will have it at the 35 yard line. That's the second time that's happened. Here's what Colorado has the next few weeks, actually the rest of the way. This is their Bermuda Triangle, Dave, because yeah. they had K-State today, the number 24 A&M at home, and then they have to go to Austin. That is uh, that is a, a, a tough trio right there, boy. That's a, that's a test. Bermuda Triangle is a good call there, but they survived leg one, apparently. At this stage, it looks to be the case. Roberson out of the gun. Colorado brings four, pass to Clark is complete, and he gets out of bounds at the 42-yard line, an advance of seven. Now Kansas State in their up-tempo, two-minute drill as such, with two minutes and 28 seconds to go. Remember, every time the, you get a first down in college football, the clock stops for the chains to move. Now Clark got out of bounds on first down to stop the clock, but every time a first down is generated, that, that occurs. Robertson will move the launch point down the middle, and Rocket makes the catch on a blue dart to the 34-yard line. Boy, he had some RPMs on that throw. And remember, Kansas State only has one timeout remaining. Now, get, getting Robertson out of pocket is, is a good call because he's barely six feet tall. And to see Lockett down the field, who's well under six feet tall, you have to have unobstructed view. And he did because of changing that launch point. Scobie on a draw. They're trying to break a big one here. And he's dragged down at the 28. That's going to eat up some clock. That was Lewis. They caught him with Lewis nosy at the line of scrimmage in their dime defense. And Lewis, who's a linebacker in the dime configuration, made a play. The officials weren't ready for action, were they? I don't know if the play clock was reset. Right. Kansas State was so up tempo they got uh, ahead of the game. So make them restart. Yeah, John Bible is indicating now to reset the play clock. One of three, 33 percent for 300 or for 100 yards, and those two interceptions are costly. Inside 140 left, Roberson, nobody open apparently. Now throwing to Scobie, and he's going to be dropped around the 25. His forward progress will get the clock stopped because it will be enough for a first down. But there's now a minute and a half left. They need to score quickly, obviously, and then hope that they can recover an onside kick. That's their only hope. And Colorado is playing the vaunted prevent defense. They only rushed three and dropped eight into coverage that last snap. They bring four this time. Underneath throw, Scobie. Colorado wants to keep him in the middle of the field, Another but he'll have a first down at the nine. I have never seen more shoes come off yeah. in a football game than this afternoon. Strickland ran right out of his shoe. I mean, a bunch of guys have run out of shoes. There's a flag on the play. I don't know if they're, and they're talking it over the Bible. The, um, the referee didn't even know the flag had been thrown. And let's see what it is. Not enough people on the line of scrimmage for Kansas State, and they're up tempo, so that play is nullified. I think I think they're going to call is going to be only six men on the line of scrimmage again. The offensive formation was illegal. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage. Five yard penalty. That's what happens sometimes. You get in the up tempo and the receivers don't communicate. And one has to step up on the line while the other one's flexed off. And not enough guys lined up on the line of scrimmage. Have to have seven. Roberson, he's going to be dropped Chesney. again. Chesney it's gone. McChesney. You're right, Dave, the 280-pound sophomore. That's five sacks against Roberson today. He's doing a heck of a job on Hanarshan at right tackle. McChesney's got his number a little bit. Hanarshan doesn't know if he's going to take the outside on him or take it to the inside. And watch it right here. Bull rushes him, takes the inside, and finishes it off. Anarshan setting a little soft because he's not sure which way McChesney's going to go, and McChesney explodes into him, and then it's all over. 
In this football game, K-State, 66 snaps on offense for 190 yards. That's less than three yards a snap. That's defense. That is solid defense. And Coach Barnett is more than happy with his football team. McChesney's had a great football game, as has this entire Colorado defensive football team. Do you know what? He said that Colorado is better than people believe nationally. He said it back in the summer at the Big 12 media days in Dallas. He said it again to us yesterday. He said, you know what? We're better than people realize. And you know, they work so hard in the, in the winter and the spring that fall ball was a break. Roberson again in trouble. And this will be another sack at the 35. Kansas State's offensive line being overpowered right now. Colorado is pinning their ears back and meeting at the quarterback. They're, they've not total disregard for the run. They know Kansas State has to throw the football, and they're just teeing off. Thirty seconds to go in the game. They need a minor miracle. Roberson, Hail Mary. and Robbie Robinson couldn't corral it. He wanted intercepted, and then he semi-spiked it to the ground. He's not happy, but he should be, because field position-wise, it's better for his football team. Because now it's fourth down. Spike it to the ground. Although if he could have secured, well, he, he could have. He should have caught it because if then, then right. Colorado all they have to do is put the knee down once and they Roberson, go home. Roberson limping to the sideline. So Roberson, I don't know if he'll be able to finish this last play. He comes out of the football game. And, it, and at this point in time, Mark Dunn has to come in for the for another Hail Mary. Well, Roberson has taken a number of shots today. Hopefully, he's all right. This is going to be a double pass back to Dunn. He's got blockers. Not enough of them, though. And on fourth down, Colorado will take over. Lewis the tackle, and Colorado has pulled the upset. They're going to beat number 12, Kansas State, on the road. And maybe, indeed, the Buffs are back. Yeah, yeah. you know, you just you have to sit there and, and think a little bit. They're back. You know, I mean, they're, they made a statement today. They were more physical at the line of scrimmage, really, from the start of the football game to the conclusion of the football game in Kansas State. When you win the skirmish at the line of scrimmage, normally the contest goes in your favor. And Colorado celebrating right now. As an offensive lineman, there's nothing better than this. You come out on the football field to genuflect, take the victory formation. Everybody kind of protects their quarterback here. He takes the snap, and everybody just corrals around him, and, and then you, it's a victory formation. You take a knee and go to the buses. After you take a shower, of course, you don't want to go to the buses, you know, until you clean yourself up. No, shower's a good idea. Right. Colorado was confident. Think about this, Dave. Oh, that's that's that, a cheap one. Yeah. That's a cheap one. That's a real cheap one. Yeah, you don't you don't want to get involved with that. That's, that's tank. And tank uh, tank fired fired some early ammunition there. And, and you know what? He he may be in a situation where he's going to be gone from the game. Well, and, uh, that's in, in the NFL. That'd cost you some cash. And Bill Snyder's going to talk to him about it right now. And tank uh, tank fired a full round there. Well, this is a frustrated Kansas State team. Such an emotional game last week, losing by one in Norman, Oklahoma. And actually, Colorado was penalized before Tank's penalty for celebration as they came onto the football field. They penalized him for, for the celebration, but they could care less. Yeah. And then Tank, I think, was frustrated and upset because Colorado was celebrating, and, and he... Personal foul on the defense. That's a 15-yard penalty. Disqualification of yeah, the player gone. involved. He's gone. I figured he'd be gone. In the NFL, that cost you a few bucks. Think about this. Colorado, with high hopes this year, started against Fresno State. They lose 24-22, and everybody in the Denver area was getting after Gary Barnett, and he took a whole lot of heat until they beat Colorado 41 to 13. But I don't know if anybody was sold in that area, perhaps until this afternoon. Well, and then Fresno State beat everybody else, and they're number 10 in the country. Yes. So that 24-22 loss, which should have been a victory, uh, other than five giveaways, I mean, Colorado would be unblemished, and they'd be well into the top 15 themselves. 
And they're, they're proving it today. I mean, all that is rhetoric and talk. They came out the football field and played today. They did, and Colorado has knocked off Kansas State 16-6. to six. And Colorado goes to 4-1. and one. And we go downstairs. Jim Knox is with Gary Barnett. Okay, thank you, Drew. Right now, Bill Snyder and Gary Barnett talking at midfield. How are well, you guys doing last week? Yeah, so. Good luck to you. Thank you. Same to you, Bill. Go share home. Let's get Gary Barnett real quick. Coach, this has to be the biggest win since returning back to Colorado, knocking off a team like K-State here on the road. Well, I'm just really proud of the kind of focus our team had in this game and all week and last week, and uh, we lost a couple key players, and, you know, it just didn't bother them. Somebody else just kept stepping up. But uh, this is something, this game is a game these guys have all been pointing for. You know, this whole trek through the Northern Division is something that we've been pointing to. And uh, we were a little brash and came out and said we want to go there. And I didn't say we were going, but we said we wanted to go there. And we'll, we're still wanting to go there. And we're going to do all the things we can to get there. And just a great effort, great defensive game by our players. And, uh, you know, just a great program win. All right, Coach, congratulations on the big win. Drew? Thank you. All right, Jim, Gary Barnett's team now 2-0 and in conference play. And K-State unbelievably 0-2. Our Dr. Pepper player of the game, really the defense led by that. Tyler Brayton. <laughs> 15 tackles for loss today by that CU defense. Dave, quick final thought. Well, the game was won at the line of scrimmage in Colorado, won at the line of scrimmage on both sides of the football. It was just a great performance all the way around by the Colorado Buffaloes. Well, Colorado will be back among the nation's top 25, a familiar spot for them most of the last decade and a half. Remember to join us next week, 12:30 in the East. Number five, Texas, visit Stillwater. Now for Dave Lapham and Jim Knox and our entire crew, I'm Drew Goodman saying so long from Wagner Field in Manhattan, Kansas.